Hello everyone. In a few minutes we will start our lesson. I'm sorry for delay because I had some problems connecting. But you have all time to prepare your crochet hooks. Or just one hook, it's all we need. Tapestry needle, scissors and crochet thread that you will use. Before I start the video, I want to ask you, um, please like videos. It helps the algorithm to uh, share this video with others and uh, bring more people to my channel. I will really appreciate if you will do that. And also um, share my videos with friends who love to crochet and want to learn. Those videos are free. They're going to stay here. If you cannot join them live, um, you can always see them in recording. They're always available. And also, if you would love to donate to my channel, uh, you can go to my website, irishcrochetlab.com. And there is donate button you will find in the top of the page. Um, if you want to support me, I will really appreciate that. So, um, hello to all those who just joined me. I will turn off our beautiful saxophone music. And we can start our lesson. For the lesson, um, for this motif that we're going to crochet, I will use um, uh, my favorite crochet thread that actually I don't have too much to make something big, but enough for lessons. I really love this thread. I will use, if you want to use thread, if you're just learning, if you're practicing, you can pick up any thread you're comfortable with. My thread is in thickness, very similar to DMC Perle Cotton, um, 12, between 12 and 8. I will use uh, thread for padding cord number 10 from Aunt Lydia's and um, crochet hook uh, 0 0.9 millimeters. I should use finer hook like 0 0.75, but it's easier to crochet when I make videos. I do not see my hands actually. I look through the uh, glass, through the phone on my hands. So we will crochet today this beauty, this very beautiful crochet motif. It's absolutely gorgeous. Quite complicated, but uh, we will solve this puzzle together today, right? So for the padding cord, you will need to cut. We will start right away using padding cord. For padding cord, cut thread that is four meters long and fold it four times. So four meters, fold it four times. So make ready your hook, your um, thread. I'll give you a few minutes to prepare and see who joined me, who is already here. Okay. I hope we will not have any interruptions. internet work these days is really uh, strange. So let's quickly look at the diagram. Diagram quite complicated and um, the most important thing we always have to go and figure out where the beginning and where's the end of your crochet work. And as you remember we were discussing this before, those two arrows are important. This arrow indicate the beginning of your crochet and this indicates the end where you will finish. So when we look at the diagram of course we see this beginning. So we will begin here and our finishing arrow is right there. So for some of you you kind of like how how is this work? What is this where it goes? You always look at arrows, small arrows like this throughout entire work you see them 
And of course, we will follow this thick red line. Always, will, you will never make a mistake. As soon as you find this arrow, follow the red line and small arrows next to it that show you the direction which way you have to go. And we will crochet. First, of course, we will not go right away and make this sleeve. The first thing we will make this netting, netted square. Uh, basically, it's more rectangular than square. So we will crochet 12 single crochet stitches over the padding cord at first. Then we will have to drop our padding cord. And we will come back to crochet those leaves later. First of all, we will make this netted uh, rectangle. And then we will go and crochet together and talk about the um, diagram. This diagram is too big and I don't really want to spend time only reading the diagram at first. So we will crochet at first our first steps, this rectangle. And uh, let's just quickly talk about this rectangle. It's also important. It's very easy. You just netted a rectangle. So we will crochet uh, 12, uh, 21 stitches, 21 single crochet stitches over the padding cord. Then we will drop padding cord and we will crochet netting. Three single, uh, three chain three. You see this little arrow? They show us those little arrows which way you go. So first you go this way, crochet, then this way, and so on. So you follow those little, little arrows. So we will crochet three, chain three, single crochet stitch, after skipping one, two, and three. Actually, you skip two, this uh, single crochet we will not cut account because it will, from this single crochet stitch, the chain of three coming. So skip two, single crochet into the next stitch. An entire um, rectangle is crocheted with exactly the same pattern. You crochet chain three, skip two, single crochet. This is for the first row. We have chain three, single crochet after skipping two stitches. At the end, single crochet, chain one, and at the end, double crochet. Then you turn your work, and after that second row, we will repeat seven times. So the entire uh, rectangle consists of uh, eight rows. And the second, third, and the last, all of them from second to eighth row are the same. You repeat exactly the same. Chain three, single crochet stitch in the arch below. Three chain, single crochet in the arch below. Each row ended by chain one, double crochet stitch in the base where you begin into that stitch of chain three and you crochet this way at, to the end so when we will finish the eighth row this is when we'll come back and we'll talk about the rest of the diagram so if you have the diagram um, and you, if you have a book please follow this with me i will just tell you what to crochet so pick up your padding cord and your thread. Also, uh, to make it easier, uh, cut a long piece of thread, number 10. I forgot to prepare this piece. This piece will help us to hold padding cord. I like to do that. I never did that before, but then I realized that it's easier this way. I saw somebody else did it, which was helpful. So take this thread and insert into the loop of your padding cord. And this will help us to hold onto the beginning of this because it's not very easy to crochet when you start. So what I do, I just go and wrap around my pinky this end that I added. Insert the hook into your into the loop of your 
padding cord and make a first slip stitch to secure our thread onto the padding cord. We're done here and now we can crochet around. Go around the padding cord and crochet 21 single crochet stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, <coughs> 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, hello Rick, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. 21. So we have our 21 stitches. Now we can make some adjustments. First of all, we can take off this thread. We don't need it anymore. It was very easy to crochet for me at least. If you like this idea, you can do that. So now what we will do, we will need to make sure that you do not see your padding cord anywhere between stitches. And if I will bring closer my work you could see you can see my padding cord this is what you have to avoid hello rebecca also you don't want your padding cord to show here at the tip right there so we will have to rid of it how we do that first of all holding the padding cord right here hello galina And push your stitches kind of together, not too much. Don't make out of it um, a curve. Like, for example, if I'll pull too much, you see what will happen. You don't want that also, right? So make sure they are snug together. And you do not see this part here. So how to rid of this part over there? Well, first of all, let me adjust a little bit. My stitches are a little bit too close together. And I can always come back and if it, I need it shorter, I can squeeze the stitches more. And why? I will tell you why. Because our motif is quite uh, oval, right? We don't want it square here. We don't want it like geometrical. I see I re uh, lost you for a minute. Once in a while we will have the problem probably with connection. Not sure what it is. I think it's just because everybody right now on, on Zoom, on YouTube, everybody at home and everybody doing something. So now, to rid of that tip right here of padding cord, you will have to take uh, each strand of your padding cord. We have four strands and pull on each one because you don't know which one is sticking out. Do that very gently, holding your stitches with your hand. Pull on those slowly and you would see that your thread will disappear. Take one, then take another one. Then one more. And you can see that all this will disappear. This is what you want. You don't want any of your stitches from padding cord show over here. So now I will adjust just slightly. It's a straight line for now. This is what I want. It's easier to crochet this way. 
Uh, now, this short tail of the working thread, we will deal with this just a little bit later. For now, just let's forget about this, okay? So, following the, the diagram, we will have to, after you made 21 stitches, turn your work and drop your padding cord. We will not need it for a while. Just keep it there. First row, I always secure on my right hand with my pinky. It's easier for me to crochet. So now we will crochet. First row, chain three, one, two, three. Skip one, two, and into the third stitch, crochet, single crochet stitch. Okay, let me readjust my camera. I just really don't like the way my hand's going away somewhere, and it's because my camera is not positioned very well. I want you to see everything. Seems to me everything is fine now. I'm sorry. It seems like I set everything right, now I see it's not right. Okay, now, chain three again. One, two, and three. Skip two stitches on the padding cord, one, two, and into the third stitch, single crochet. Uh, when you will uh, connect to the stitches below, insert the hook into two loops of each stitch, of this stitch. Again, chain three, skip two on the bottom on the padding cord, one, two, single crochet into the third stitch. Again, one, two, and three. Skip two, one, two, and into the third stitch. Into the third stitch. That's just a second, I think I went too far. Yeah, right here. And again, chain three. One, two, skip, into the third stitch, single crochet. Again, one, two, three, skip two, into the third stitch. Right here at the end will be quite um, tight, so be careful. Don't poke your fingers. I'll hooks are sharp. Uh, you will have to have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six arches here. Let's see, make sure we have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six little arches. And at the very end, we have to make chain one, chain one, and double crochet stitch into that very first stitch on the padding cord. That is going to be our, the beginning will be quite tough. You have to get there. Again, be careful with your fingers. Sometimes it's easier to stretch that stitch if your stitch is too tight, which is like for me, I crochet naturally tight and that first stitch can be very difficult to get through. So what you can do, you can take needle. I, for example, cannot get in there right now. And with the back of the needle, not with the sharp part, go and stretch your stitch a little to help yourself. And after that, probably that will help. At least it helps me. You can try this also. So let's try it again. So chain one and double crochet stitch into that first stitch. Remember to insert hook into both loops. Okay. And now we can make our double crochet stitch. So first row is done. 
Now turn your work. And second row again, chain three, one, two, three. Now we will crochet single crochet stitches into arches. I do not poke through the arch, I just go around, hook under the arch and crochet the stitch, single crochet stitch. Again, one, two, three and single crochet stitch into the next arch and repeat to the end one two three single crochet into the arch one two three single crochet stitch into the arch One, two, three, <clears throat> single crochet stitch into the arch. And always make sure you have exactly the same amount of those little arches. Have to be six of them. It's very easy to lose count of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're not done yet. We have to make again at the very end each row ending with chain one and double crochet stitch into that uh, base of the chain one of the chain three i'm sorry so right here for me i will go not into the chain but into the very last stitch i will just go there here's my single crochet stitch it's very easy to connect so I will use that opportunity and I will go there so double crochet again turn your work and now we will repeat the second row that one the, the one that we just made here's our arches we will repeat this row six more times so we have first row second we need eight rows so six more to go and again one two and three single crochet stitch into the arch one two three single crochet stitch into the arch i want to tell you right away this lesson will be long <laughs> uh, this motif is quite uh, complicated i will try not to uh, stop on any um, unnecessary talk because we want to finish this as soon as possible so the pattern is very easy again i'm at the very end i finished with single i was chain three single crochet and I have to make chain one and double crochet stitch goes into that um, last uh, first stitch of the chain three this place is also quite tight for me here so like that Cha double crochet so three rows continue three more Actually, not three more. What I'm talking about. Four more. Okay, again, one, two, three. Single crochet stitch into the arch. One, two, three. Single crochet into the arch. And this is how we go into the arch at the end last three chain three single crochet and again the same thing 
chain one and double crochet stitch into that very bottom of the chain or the beginning of the chain three and again turn your work in the diagram I will just show you uh, so here's each row begins with chain three and we finish with chain one and double crochet stitch goes into this first stitch of chain three at this side then when you go this direction the same thing chain one and double crochet stitch goes into this chain at the base of the chain So let's continue. So this is probably the easiest part. And then we will have fun crocheting all the time over the padding cord. This is a very important little piece, even if it's easier. We will connect to this uh, little rectangle, this netted rectangle, all our petals. And it's very important to remember what and where on the sides of this piece. Where you connect, otherwise your motif will be uh, shifted and look weird. But you know, um, sometimes when you make mistake, uh, when you crochet, please don't write the wear uh, rip of your work. Uh, I think it's not the wisest thing to do. Why? Because um, this is how new things discovered. Every time you make a mistake, this is how you discover something totally different. You never know, probably your mistake will bring to a new motif. So don't rush to uh, unravel your work. So I'm continuing. I'm not really telling you how to make this piece because it's very easy, repetitive. There is nothing really to think and worry about counting or not because it's impossible not to impossible to make mistake here the most important part here don't forget at the very end make that chain one and double crochet stitch and make the double crochet stitch you can see I'm going into the very base of chain three and make my double crochet there So let me see if I'm actually having eight rows. One, two, three, four, five, six. So two more rows to go. <clears throat> oh. Yes, um, I have a question here if this lesson will be available. Yes, those lessons right now they are live, but they are saved and uh, you can see the recording. Uh, you did not really miss much. And by the way, all live videos, you can actually start from the beginning. Uh, if you will move the red line to the very beginning, start it. But I don't think it's necessary. For the beginning, all you need to know is to um, <clears throat> cut padding cord four meters and fold it in half. And we are making a rectangular netting. And um, <clears throat> please don't forget to like my videos. When you press like, it helps my videos to be recommended by others on YouTube. Uh, if you don't like them, 
you know, I will not, you will not hurt my feelings if you uh, don't like them, but at least let me know why you don't like my video. Uh, is there something to Im improve or, you know, it will help me. I need to know if you don't like something. If you don't like my voice um, or my accent, you don't have to tell me that. It's okay. <laughs> what I'm looking for is uh, improving the video itself. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One more row. One more row, and then we can we will crochet the petals. So again, finishing the last row, two, three, single crochet. Um, when you crochet in Irish crochet, uh, netting like this, it's very, very important to uh, have a consistency of your tension. Your tension is everything. Crochet tight stitches and uh, regulate your tension. This is how I regulate my tension, you see, with pinky. I wrap around like this. If it's not easy like that, you can hold your thread and then wrap around later, like that. Holding it this way helps me a lot to regulate and have my uh, tension. Uh, probably not all of you hold the way I do. It's easiest way to re regulate tension. Some people crochet like this. Um, you still can regulate tension by wrapping thread around the pinky. Still will help. But I learned how to hold it this way from my childhood. This is what I do always. And I noticed that this holding that way actually is a really good thing. Not sure if it's a uh, the way books are teaching but this is the way my mom did and she taught me this way so the last stitch is again chain one double crochet stitch into the base of the chain three so we're done here and what we will do now so here's my rectangle let's come back to our um, diagram so this is basically we finished our row our row will be finished on a diagram it's right here even um, when you look at your work it seems like you are on that side but then we will turn our work and we will crochet on that side here it is we will crochet arches on the side of rectangular of rectangle and so we finished like that and we will crochet this way this is where we will go we will crochet here we need to come to our padding cord you see so you have to finish your work on the same side as your padding cord if you on this side you're in the wrong side. You have to be here where the padding cord is. So let's see at our row. So we will turn our work on the side of rectangle and we will crochet four arches. Chain three, we will connect with single crochet to the double crochet stitch here. And again, chain three, connect to double crochet, chain three, connect between this chain and double crochet there will be a place we will see and the last chain three connect with a slip stitch with a slip stitch um, between between stitches I would say I wouldn't go between stitches I will just make my slip stitch into the last stitch of the padding cord 
the last stitch that is on a padding cord. So let's continue crochet and see how this will work for us. So we finished our eighth row here. Now we turn our rectangle like that. So your last stitch and your padding cord are here. You can remove and cut off this piece of thread right here. This thread that was working thread. We don't need this piece. So what, what we do, we make chain three, one, two, three, and looking for that spot where our chain and double crochet. Here's double crochet, here and here. So our single crochet goes right there. Oh, I lost my stitch and I spliced it. Okay, one more time. Chain three, single crochet, stitch. So here's our first right there. Three more. One, two, three, single crochet stitch. Again, right there. You can actually crochet right into the connection between those two, but it's not probably going to be easy. So I just go into the double crochet right around it. Again, one, two, and three. Again, I found my double crochet stitch. Single crochet. So we have, let's look on the side of the work. We have three three arches already. Here they are. One, two, and three. And the last arch and we will connect right in here into that stitch of the padding cord. We connect with a slip stitch. <clears throat> One, two, and three. And what I do, I just go, you see that stitch our stitch, last stitch, has the top of it and the side part. I will connect to both with a slip stitch. That way I will not stretch one side of that stitch. I'm sorry, my hands went away. I wanted to see what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, let me show you one more time. So chain three and here is my stitch. If you look at this way, that stitch on a padding cord, the top of stitch, you see my hook on top and on the side of the stitch. This is where I will make my slip stitch and my thread in the wrong place. It has to be behind here. So slip stitch, grab the thread and make your slip stitch. So here's our rectangle, it's done. We have our rectangle and now we finished crocheting just next to the padding cord. Now we will crochet all through entire work over the padding cord. Since we crochet over the padding cord that has four strands, we fold it four times. Those strands sometimes will cut in between uh, your stitches. And we will have to stop quite often Pull on each strand to adjust it in such a way that you will not see your um, so that you will not see padding cord between stitches. Hello, Lynn. Have more people coming in? Tell hello to everybody and tell us where you're from. Um, so let's go. Um, to the diagram and see how we will crochet the next part. I will just stop here, put it down for a second, but we need to go and look what we are doing next. Ok, 
Okay. So let's look. So we are right there. We made our slip stitch. Hello from Tennessee. Sally, hello. So we have our slip stitch. We finished here. Now we will pick up our padding cord. Here it is. And we will crochet two single crochet stitches first. Then we will crochet this loop. We will crochet 21 stitches. You see the number here. So you don't have to sit and count each stitch. 21 single crochet stitches over the padding cord. Then we will drop our padding cord and we will crochet. Here's the last single crochet stitch. Here's the last single crochet. We will drop our padding cord and crochet chain three, single crochet <coughs> into the third stitch from the we will skip two, single crochet into third, chain one, skip one stitch, half double. Again, chain one, skip stitch on the padding cord, double crochet. And after that, we will crochet this pattern, chain one, double crochet, or I would say double crochet, chain one. Let's repeat, we will talk about this part. Crochet one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight times. We will need eight of those double crochet stitches. Let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight double crochet stitches, each stitch connected, um, separated by chain one, and we're skipping at the bottom of the first row of the petal, one stitch. So again, over the padding cord, 21 stitches, then we drop padding cord and crochet this part. And then look at those little arrows here. You see, red arrow. And then it shows us where to go. Then we connect, look at those little three dots right here, um, three, more than three, um, broken dots, bro uh, the right thing, thing to say broken line. Yeah, broken line. And we connect with single crochet stitch to the chain on the side. <clears throat> okay? Not to this one, to the second. Oh, by the way, this um, right here, I forgot probably to tell this, two stitches right there over the padding cord and over this chain, first chain of three. So, okay. Let's come back to this place. So we connect after the last double crochet stitch. Arrow shows us we connect with single crochet stitch to this arch here. And then we follow in the arrow. We go this way. We will crochet into each chain one in this gap, three single crochet stitches all the way to the end. And three stitches right here into this chain of three. After that, uh, they make slip stitch here. I didn't make my slip stitch. We can try, but I didn't. Uh, slip stitch into the mm, last stitch of the chain. I um, really don't know why to do that, <clears throat> but we can do this. I will follow the, <clears throat> the rules of the diagram. So after we finish this last three stitches, we crochet with over the padding cord, make single crochet stitch right there into this last stitch in this corner. So again, after that, we turn in our work. Here's the, th the arrow and we will crochet over the padding cord. You see the red line. So we will crochet over the padding cord. Um, three single crochet stitches pico all the way to the end. Only, only, only. We have only seven picos and then we stop and only finish with single crochet stitches. And almost also notice that we crochet, you see those lines under the single crochet stitches? We crochet into the back loops throughout an entire work. 
So let's go and fin and make this um, <clears throat> petal. <clears throat> Hello, Wendy. Hello, Louise. I saw you ladies came when I was talking, so I was waiting. I will finish what I was saying. <laughs> so now we have to turn our work like this. Pick up our padding cord. Actually, padding cord has to go between the thread and between the stitch. And now we will crochet over the padding cord two stitches and also over there around this first chain of three on the side. So make sure you're in the same spot as I am. So we're following the diagram. We crochet over the padding cord, two st uh, single crochet stitches and around this first chain on the side, chain of three. So let's do this. One <clears throat> and two. And here I will stop and right the way I will adjust this area. I don't want to see my padding cord there. Since I have very little amount of stitches, it's easy to pull on the padding cord all four strands together. That's it. So now we crochet only over the padding cord 21 single crochet stitches. This is how we start our petal. <coughs> Around the padding cord only. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and twenty-one. Twenty-one. Uh, we will have to have curve, and right now our stitches on the padding cord look like a straight line. We will turn our petal and make it curvy after we will make our first uh, or second row, okay? When we will have to connect to this rectangle. For now it will be just easier to crochet over this when it's not uh, turned into the curvy arch. Uh, when we will curve this uh, piece right now, our stitches will become really tight together and it will not be very easy to get into the stitches below. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to uh, warn you about. We are not doing right now anything. We are not shaping our petal right now. Um, I'm not even sure what is best. Should I just put the diagram right in front of you? Instead of, let me see, let's try. I really don't like when I crochet show this all the time. And it's on my way, on my way for my thread and everything. Nah, I will not do this, I'm sorry. <laughs> I will just come back to this again and again. Okay, so now we drop our padding cord according to the diagram, turn our work, and we will crochet our first row of the petal. First row of the petal goes this way. We crochet chain three. One, two, three. Then we skip two stitches. One, two, and into the third stitch,
into the third stitch, insert hook into both loops, make single crochet stitch. After this, we make chain one and uh, skip one stitch on the padding cord and make half double crochet stitch. I would recommend to make your uh, chain one little bit looser because when you will crochet into those gaps, into those chain ones, three single crochet stitch stitches, it will not be very easy to ins to fit them there. So, or make, um, and I cannot tell you it's okay to make chain two. So better to make this chain one slightly looser, loose than like, not too tight. So half double crochet, let me come back. So chain three, skip two, in the third stitch make a single crochet. Then um, chain one and half double, skip one stitch here at the bottom, one stitch into the next stitch, half double crochet. Again, chain one. And now we will repeat the same pattern. Skip one, double crochet, chain one, again, skip a single crochet on the padding cord and double crochet into the next stitch. And we crochet this way to the end, to the end right over there. So again, chain one, skip one stitch at the bottom, double crochet stitch into the next stitch, chain one. Again, skip one, double crochet into the next stitch, chain one, skip one at the bottom, the stitch that on a padding cord, double crochet, double crochet into the next. Very important not to poke yourself with the hook. So be careful. I know that Wendy told me, wrote to me that she hurt herself with a hook not long ago. That's not fun. Okay, and again, chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next stitch. And I can make my last double crochet stitch. So chain one, double crochet, into the next stitch. And I always like to check, do I have the right amount of my double crochet stitches? So it was first single, double, and then I have to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight double crochet stitches. Now I will stop. And let's look at our diagram. So right in here, here we are. We made this double crochet stitch and now we have to connect with this single crochet stitch on the side of our rectangular netting. Single crochet stitch right here to this second chain three. And then we will turn and we will make three single crochet stitches into the gap of chain one throughout to the end. Okay, so let's do this. I will show you how to connect. So your work look like this. I like to connect this way. Uh, you can turn that way. You can turn this way. I always turn everything clockwise. So here's my last double crochet stitches. It's supposed to be like this. This is how it will look like at first. Then you flip or turn your rectangular netting 
and make single crochet stitch into this side you remember how we did it right we begin two single crochet stitches over the padding cord and around the first chain here's the second chain if you look on diagram and we connect after we made our last double crochet stitch we connect our petal to this second chain of three with single crochet stitch like this very important not to slice splice your thread and I crochet with um, silk that is not very well uh, <clears throat> twisted so okay after this this is how it will look like again watch my hands flip it flip it like this hello Rene now we will crochet three single crochet stitches into all this gaps between double crochets into where the chain one we crochet around it three single crochet stitches <clears throat> one two three and continue into each place that spot or space or gap whatever you want to call it crochet your three single crochet stitches since I make each chain one slightly stretched slightly not too much I normally crochet too tight in my first motif when I was making I made my normal chain one but when I was trying to fit three single crochet stitches into that chain one gap that was very complicated wasn't very easy so um, This is why I'm telling you, make it a slightly stretched, slightly loose. So this is how it will look like. You see? Let's continue to the end. One, two, three. Uh, and here you have to be really nice and neat with your crochet and your three single crochet stitches they have to be uh, tight one two and three and I still have to fit right here and over there one two and three and the last will be easier because we have their chain three so we have chain three let's make our last three stitches one two and three and remember they made slip stitch at the end right um, right here I um, could make it into this area but I'd rather have pick up two strands of thread of the last stitch and make that slip stitch they want us to make slip stitch okay so this is how my work look like naturally it's turning this way like that so what we will do next next we will have to shape our petal because we will connect our petal let's look at the diagram so here I finished my um, this is my slip stitch 
Now I will have to pick up padding cord, make single crochet stitch over the padding cord into that little corner of the rectangle and then turn my petal in such a way that I have to crochet on the edge of the petal. So on the edge of the petal we will make three single crochet stitches pico. We crochet into the back loops and we need only seven picots and then finish only with single crochet stitches and connect again to rectangular part of our crochet. And we will again continue with the padding cord and connect with two single crochet stitches over the next arch of chain three on the side of our rectangular piece. Okay, let's do that. <clears throat> so when we will connect our petal, we, this is when we can um, here. I lost myself. <laughs> Sorry. Here. So we have to connect. Where it is? Ah, oh my God! I lost it. Let me see the uh, <laughs> diagram. Okay, to the corner. I'm sorry. Okay, so here it is. This is how we look at the work. And now we have to connect this to the corner. Right in here. To the very first stitch between. Last two stitches right there. And that first stitch on the padding cord when we uh, actually finished, remember, we crocheted 21 single crochet stitches. That was the last stitch. This is where we make our single crochet. Right there. Find the stitch. You can actually get again from the back to stretch it so that you can see where you're going. Go first with the hook into that stitch and then here's your padding cord and crochet, single crochet stitch here. Now, this is the time when you have to shape it. You see how it look like? It's not flat. We need flat petal. So what we do, we connect it to this, and now holding those stitches here, we have to pull on it. You uh, probably find it easier if I will, let me take this single crochet down. After the slip stitch, this is when we will shape our petal and then connect, okay? And let me restart. Just, I think it will be easier. Hold on, I lost my slip stitch. Okay, slip stitch. And now, I think it will be way easier. Let's do, let's shape the petal. I'm holding my petal with my hands and I pull on the padding cord. And you can be quite generous here, <laughs> pulling on it. Not too much. You see? So when you pull it, you have it curved. That's what you need. Like this. And go and stretch a little bit here. Shape it that it will be round. Here it is. And now it will be easier to connect and continue. Okay. So pick up your padding cord and we connect with single crochet stitch. We go into that corner. Of course, it's look upside down, not the way we have our pe um, diagram. On the diagram, it will be a little bit different. 
angle. I needed to stretch my stitch. It's too tight here. Okay, single crochet stitch. Connect your petal. It's very important to connect your petal. And I will stop here for you so that you actually will see where I am on a diagram. So I finished like this and this is how my work look like. But if you look at the diagram, it actually like that. So you will end up having everything, if you crochet everything right, if you move your work correctly, this is how you hold it in your hands. But on the diagram, this is the bottom of the leaf of your work, like this. Okay? This is where we started. <clears throat> this is where we started. Here it is, our netted area, netted rectangle. Then we made our leaf, first petal, leaf, whatever it is, and connected to that corner. Here it is. Now we will turn and crochet the edge of our petal. Let's do that. I have to readjust something in here. It's not very easy to crochet and constantly grab the book. And I really want you to see everything. Very... Um, I have to readjust, totally redo my table and um, everything I make. What if I'll put it here? You can see it very well, I think, right? Okay, ladies. So... Let me just have everything twisted here. I will be back to the normal position it was before, like that. Okay, so single crochet stitch, we connected our petal. Now we will turn our work like this, clockwise. Pick up our padding cord and we will crochet into the back loops of each stitch that we made before. Those three single crochet stitches over the chain one, right? So we will crochet over the padding cord and make sure you go into the back loops. Here they are. You can see them if you flip your work a little bit. So I go into my next stitch. right there. Bedding cord is twisted a little bit here with thread. So make sure we're doing everything correct here. And three single crochet stitches going into the back loops over the padding cord this is what happened when you crochet too tight i like the crispiness of work in irish crochet i like it to make tight now three single crochet stitches uh, pico one two three each pico consists of chain three and slip stitch close it with a slip stitch again let's do three single crochet stitches and then i will adjust fix my padding cord because you will see what will happen to padding cord Even I hold my padding cord, as you can see, 
also together with a thread it helps a lot but still padding cord have tendency to cut between the stitches so before I will make my pico I make another single three single crochet stitches over the edge of the petal but before I go further I see that my padding cord is you can see it between my stitches and in that corner over here and I would probably will not pay too much attention to my padding cord but I crochet with different color it's not acro it's not white and I can see my different shade of green but even if I don't see it I always remove padding cord I don't like see it your work need to be neat so we'll stop here and this is when I will pick up each strand at the time I just give you all those details now later I will not talk about this I will just do it and you know why and what I am doing but at the beginning of crochet I will go into really deep de into details why I do what I do and so when you look in the back you see that padding cord disappeared from the from between stitches and you cannot see a uh, padding cord in the corner of the petal it look neat it looks really what you want accomplish neatness in your work and let's continue crochet so throughout entire edge of the petal try to keep your padding cord also here tight stretched so that way it's easier for the padding cord not to appear between stitches probably you will be luckier than me I always have that problem so okay again we have three single crochet stitches making pico one two three pico It looks complicated first petal but then they are made exactly the same way and um, you will use to it again three single crochet stitches over the padding cord and don't forget into the back loops of each stitch again pico And three single crochet stitches so we need seven picots and then after that we can stop having picots we just only will continue crochet with single crochet stitches I just repeat this pattern so I'm not saying anything because everything is the same again we make pico And uh, once in a while it's uh, good to stop and to see how your padding cord behaves here. I normally don't look behind, I just hold my stitches with my right hand and just take my padding cord and pull slightly, not much. You actually between fingers will feel how the thread moving, that thread that was cut between and then you look on the back, everything looks nice, neat and clean. Uh, so far, 
Is everything uh, clear, ladies? Please post your questions if there's something I missed or showed and you didn't understand. The most important in those diagrams in this book, follow their arrows, red arrows. They show you which way to go. It's not too complicated. When we look at those diagrams, the motif looks like, oh my God, I don't know how I will crochet this. But uh, it's not as difficult. I will tell you what is more difficult is to decode the books that were written 100 years ago in English they are the most difficult for me because English is not my native tongue so I have a really difficult time understanding sometimes what is it that they're saying so let's see one two three four five six seven I have seven picots now I can continue single crochet stitches without picots don't have to worry about it and I am not counting as you noticed on the diagram, they don't tell you how many stitches are there. We're not counting them. We don't care about how many of them. All you need to do, just go to the very end of your row of the petal, and that's it. And you know where they end. Here it is, where the double crochet stitch is. This is where we go with your last single crochet stitch for the edge of the um, petal and I want to make sure that I actually made that last stitch I think I did no I didn't the last stitch here And before I connect my petal, again, I will look at my padding cord if it's behaving well, if it does not um, showing anywhere between my stitches. So if when you pulled, like I right now, you see, I pulled a little bit too much and my petal became kind of curled, all you have to do, stretch it stretch it a little bit and your petal will become flat again so this is how it look like so your first petal is done now we have to connect our petal so here i am i finished my last stitch and now i will go with over the padding cord we continue you see those arrows they just show you all the time which way to go again arrow again again and so on this is how how it works so after my last single crochet stitch on the edge of the petal i am going over the padding cord crochet two single crochet stitches and connect it to the one two three third arch on the side of our rectangle rectangle so here it is This is where it is. Just want you to show this part here. I have my chain three. And I will connect two single crochet stitches over the padding cord and into this chain one. One single crochet and another one, two, two single crochet stitches. And make sure again that your padding cord is not shown in transition anywhere between the petal last stitch and the two stitches right here between them that you don't see your padding cord. All you need to do just slightly push pull on it. This is how your work look like now. Now, we are going to crochet. I will put my work down for a second. Let's look at the diagram again. So now we will go and crochet. Look at this, 27 
27 single crochet stitches over the padding cord only. After that, we can drop our padding cord and make again almost the same repeat pattern as all of them are the same. And one more thing, each petal has a size of its changes. 21 stitches, 27, again 21, then when you will come here will be again 21, 27, 21. Those stitches for the base of the petal. The numbers are here, they're all written in here. Okay, so let's just look. Uh, so 27 stitches, then we will crochet again exactly the same pattern. I will just take my uh, diagram away. You will look at um, diagram together with me and uh, we will crochet this pe uh, petal the same pattern. I will not repeat what I'm doing here. Uh, because it's all easy. I will come back only and show when we will connect and what, okay? Uh, so when we will crochet the first row and then the second row, we will also, each petal always after the first round or first row, first row of double crochet stitches always connected to the rectangle, to the net. Then you turn it and you crochet those three single crochet stitches into those gaps. Then you connect so this is a repetitive pattern. So how it, I, I explain how you read it, how you go about it. So after those stitches, three single crochet stitches, you make slip stitch, pick up padding cord and connect over the padding cord, single crochet stitch and connect to the previous petal. Connect to the stitch, third stitch before the pickle. Very easy to see, right? First, second, third. To the third stitch you connect your new petal. And then you again crochet the edge of the petal over the padding cord into the back loops. And at first three single crochet uh, stitches pico and you repeat this seven times. And then finish the edge of the petal just with single crochet stitches. Again, connect when you finish connect to the rectangle. Very carefully watch where they show you to connect. They are very specific about it, where you connect your next petal, okay? So let's go and do this <coughs> uh, next petal. I will put my book down. You can also look at the diagram with me as you crochet, as you go. I will put it in front of me more that I could see where I'm going and we will crochet together. So now 27 single crochet stitches over the padding cord only. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 
26 and 27. Um, I will just slightly move my stitches, make sure that my padding cord is not showing anywhere, which is not really important at, the, at this point. So first I will have to, because I will shade my petal later, it's just easier to crochet when it's not curved yet. So now, here's how your work look like when you crochet. Funny looking like hieroglyphics. <laughs> it's kind of fun to crochet those motifs, honestly. So now, this is how it look like. You turn your work. This is how it look like again. And drop your padding cord. We don't need it now. We crochet the petal. One two three chain three skip two stitches into the third stitch make single crochet stitch then chain one remember we stretch our chain one slightly skip stitch on the bottom into the next stitch have double crochet stitch and now repeat the pad of the pattern chain one skip one double crochet and you repeat this pattern to the end to the end where you started right there right in here and um, you can always count how many stitches double crochet stitches we will have more double crochet stitches than in the first petal one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven double crochet stitches so let's continue doing this crochet so chain one skip one double crochet again chain one skip one double crochet Uh, you can also count them right away, you know when to stop. So we have single crochet, have doubles, three double crochet stitches. Now we will have to have four. Four. Chain one. Skip one. Five double crochet stitch again chain one skip one six And I'm at the very end, one more, right in here. Skip one and into the next one. Here's our last double crochet stitch. Now we have to, after each double crochet stitch, we connect, we connect to rectangle. Let's see where we have to connect this second petal. Here's our double crochet stitch. Here it is. And we connect to the last, or first actually, this was our first arch. One, two, three, four. First arch with single crochet stitch. So right after the last double crochet stitch, we go into the first arch, connect with single crochet stitch, and then this broken line lead us to crochet three single crochet stitches into those gaps of chain one.
And again, watch me how I connect. So we have to connect since we our work look like that. Now, turn. Not all entire work, but just a rectangle because we have to get and connect that corner. This right here. And our corner is over there. Here it is. This is our arch. You can see, right? So, right here with a single crochet stitch. Connect. Now, turn together with your petal. And this is how this work, if you're doing everything right, this is how it will look like now. This is layout. And now we connect crochet, single crochet stitches into the edge of the petal. It's three single crochet stitches into each gap. One, two, and three. And the next gap again between double crochet stitches. Three single crochet. And um, to shape it really well, it's very important to crochet tight. And again, uh, sometimes people ask me, uh, I crochet tight already. So what I have to do, I cannot insert my hooks in my stitches. So then um, I would recommend to change crochet hook to half size or size uh, bigger than what is recommended so for example if you have thread um, number 12 and you use crochet hook number 0 0.6 then i would say go and use crochet hook uh, 0 0.75 because that way you will not crochet too tight or even if you do you have still enough room to go with your hook into stitch or, um, so tight, that I mean when I talk about crochet tight, not so tight that you cannot insert your hook into your stitches, but tight enough so that your work will look neat, each stitch the same, and your each stitch will look the same uh, when you keep your tension the same throughout your work. So now I just uh, try not to talk too much, just explain other things. So we crochet three single crochet stitches into each uh, stitch. Of the uh, chain one into the gaps between double crochet and I'm actually at the end where I have chain three again we have our last three single crochet stitches then they ask us to make slip stitch here at the very end probably for crispiness and for more precise looking stitch don't really know why but we will do that it's not a big deal We'll add extra stitch. It's funny that I just noticed it today. I didn't really pay attention to that. <laughs> okay, so this is how your work will be. If you put it flat, this is how it look like. Okay, and if you look at the diagram again with me, this is where we add. I made my three single crochet stitches I have to pick up my padding cord and connect my petal to my previous petal before. And remember, to the third stitch away from pico. And um, I would say let's shape our 
petal before we will do this. So just slightly holding your uh, stitches, pull on the padding cord. Make sure that when you pull on it, it's not too curvy, it's not too wavy, and your um, petal is not turning into a ruffle. And you know, like ruffles, they will be like this shaped. You don't want that. You want your work flat. When you put it on a table, it's actually flat. So pull on it a little bit, make the curve. And now we can connect. Let's find our stitch. and connect so count here's our pico on the first petal count three stitches to the left from left to right one two three third stitch and don't forget over the padding cord when i connect i go under both loops make a single crochet stitch like this now turn your work so here's how it will look like at first now turn your work like this and over the padding cord and over the inserting hook all the time into the back loops of each stitch so first I would go and find my stitch the correct stitch here at the very beginning it will be quite difficult because you really cannot see much your stitch is quite tight here so i will just go quickly find my hook my uh, stitch so this is my number one thing first stitch not easy to see here it is back loop of that stitch i have to go first so i stretched it just slightly so I will find it very easily now. Still not easy, but it's not easy for me because I am ladies through the looking through the camera. Okay, here's that stitch back loop. Okay, over the padding cord, three single crochet stitches at first we go three single crochet stitches over the padding cord and into the back loops it's very important to remember third stitch one two and three pico close pico with a slip stitch like that and continue three single crochet stitches of course it's nice to have magnifying glass to look through when you crochet this kind of motifs so that you will not miss any stitch pico and I forgot to adjust my padding cord, but I will in a minute. So here's my pico. And I go into the stitches. One. Two. And three. Always stretch your last stitch before you adjust your padding cord. So you can see my padding cord is showing everywhere and I can adjust it by pulling on each strand. Some strands will not uh, be pulled because they actually are in the right position. They look fine. So here is my adjusted padding cord. I can continue crochet. So you check for your neatness once in a while. 
But what will help <clears throat> holding your padding cord also with your hands here. And that will help tremendously. Otherwise, your padding cord will misbehave really badly. Actually, it's more uh, difficult to crochet uh, when padding cord is thicker. The thicker is padding cord, the more difficult it is to crochet um, motifs. And uh, actually, if you look at antique works, you will not find too many of uh, works with that are um, crocheted over the very thick padding cord. Those works were more um, expensive back then uh, because it takes time to crochet. As you can see, you stop once in a while at, and adjust your padding cord um, because you want it to look neat. Um, so those uh, motifs quite rare. They were rare even back then. <clears throat> and now um, there's actually nobody crochet uh, over uh, classical motifs. Like if you were talking about Eastern Europe, Ukraine, Russia, Belarus, because uh, other countries of former Soviet Union where Irish crochet kind of received its revival, um, all ladies crochet, modern Irish crochet. Very rarely you can find someone who would make um, traditional. I really don't know anyone. Never saw it actually. <clears throat> and continue. Sometimes um, closing picots could cause quite a difficult time for people because they are not easy to connect to that slip stitch. So if slip stitch is not easy, you can make single crochet. Uh, I don't think it will change too much of the look of the pico. But what helps me when I last stitch is a little bit stretched and then if I go into the stitch below to close my pico with slip stitch then it's easier to pull my hook and thread through that last stitch and only then just pull a little bit on that stitch and on a thread to tie and make tight that slip stitch so there are few tricks you can discover on your own how to make it easier for you I used to crochet my picots and close them all always with single crochet stitch because I really didn't like the idea of slip stitch. It wasn't easy. But now, you know, the more you crochet, the more little uh, interesting <laughs> little tricks you will discover on your own for yourself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven picots. Now I can finish my uh, edge of my motif crocheting only uh, with only a single crochet stitches into the edge so we continue crochet over the padding cord into the back loops single crochet stitches um, <coughs> Let me look at the questions, probably. Really, there is no questions there, just ladies coming in saying hello. Hello, everyone who joined me. Um, I'll, since I crocheted, I don't need to count. I just remind you and ask you um, that uh, ask you to like my videos it helps me a lot uh, more people could see the more likes a video receives uh, the better it is and easier for others to see videos uh, for those people who search online um, how to crochet 
traditional Irish crochet lace. So when you like my videos, you are helping me a lot. And not just me, helping those who are looking for uh, how to crochet for lessons. They will see my video thanks to your likes. If you don't like something, if you have suggestions or don't understand something, uh, please comment, comment. Your comments will be very important to me to know how to improve the video. Some things I can improve, some things probably not. If uh, internet interrupting, uh, there's something I cannot do. This is something I cannot fix. And these days, everybody on the internet, and it's like traffic on a highway, <laughs> the same with internet. So before I connect my petal, this is time to connect. First, I will adjust my padding cord, make sure it's not showing itself anywhere. I see a few spots that it does not look really pretty. So what I will do, I will go and pick up each strand. And you can see probably that my petal quite, quite curled. It's not what I want, but it's easy to fix. So I'm not really worried about it. But I have to fix my padding cord and then you just go like that and stretch it to help your petal become flat again not curly and not curvy and just curvy enough I would say in this <laughs> silly phrase curvy enough to be flat right so curve on the flat area but be flat when you look like a at the, pe at the petal, at the motif this way. This is how it is. Now, let's look how and where we connect after that. So we made our second petal. We crocheted the last stitch, single crochet stitch, and we have to connect this petal over the padding cord. First stitch goes into the same area where this stitch went when we connected this petal first time into this first chain of three and second stitch goes right here into that double crochet if you cannot find double crochet there is easy place to connect in this area where the gap is okay so we will connect this petal two single crochet stitches. Let's do that first and then we will continue. So I will connect over the padding cord one stitch and then the next stitch I will go into that gap between which is very easy to find it just there instead of looking for the double crochet so i connect here two single crochet stitches over the padding cord it's a little bit kind of unruly right now don't worry about those little pieces that are not looking right at first you can always fix everything by pulling on the padding cord also as you can see my flowers that i already made they're quite flat so all this will be fixed as you crochet this rectangular rectangle uh, become kind of oval and it's not on the back you can see it's not rectangle anymore and this is happening because where we connect our petals okay so we connected our second petal let's go to the third petal third petal petal is done exactly the same way the same um, pattern we have to follow exactly as here uh, only you see the way it's look like it's not as curved not rounded it's just the way you connected this they connected and our petal also will be exactly like that not as curvy this one connected to the circle this kind of half rounded and then slightly rounded petal so 
but follow the same exactly pattern as here also 21 single crochet stitches and then we all know what to do right we create our petal after single after the double crochet stitch we will connect to the rectangle netting then we will crochet our three single crochet stitches row and then we will connect petal to the second petal and then we pick up padding cord and finish the edge of the petal with spicos and again connect petal to the next spot so let's go and do that let's crochet our petal actually i want to see my just a second i have to move book in the right spot i don't remember my diagram even i crocheted enough of that motif i still need to see where i'm going with that so i need to see diagram so this is how you when you finish your second petal this is how your work will look like when it's flat here's my stitch pick up your stitch and crochet 21 single crochet stitches only over the padding cord one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen 18, 19, 20, 21. And um, I will just slightly move my stitches kind of together so that padding cord is not showing anywhere. And now I will crochet just my petal. I will turn my work drop my padding cord and we will make the body of the petal chain three one two three skip two stitches and into the third stitch make single crochet stitch then chain one skip one on the padding cord stitches those stitches are skipping make half double chain one skip one double crochet stitch and this is how we crochet to the end we will have to have eight single crochet sti uh, double crochet stitches eight or seven i don't, don't remember let's see one two three four five six seven eight eight i was right <clears throat> So um, those of you who came um, join right now, you can just watch the video. It's going to be a long video because motif is complex, long to crochet. Um, and um, I want to finish it in one video instead of making two videos together. Since I go live, there is no limit for the length of the video, so you can even make three hours videos if you need. So here's my last double crochet stitch. <coughs> and uh, so yes, I didn't finish my, I'm sorry, I'm just 
like a scatter brain today. So for those who just joined and don't have time to stay longer, you can always come back to my uh, video on to my channel and continue crochet um, this motif and watching a recorded video. Okay, so now. You're welcome, Rick. Uh, thank you for joining me today. So this is how it will look like your third petal. So if you do everything right, this is where you finished now. Now we have to connect after last double crochet stitch, we have to connect to the chain. So let me show you. I will not show on a diagram, but you will see on a diagram on this by yourself. So how I do that now holding the petal turn this part this part only and we connect into the first chain here right there this first arch we connect with single crochet stitch and after that your petal connected now you turn your work together with petal like that like that and now we crochet single crochet stitches into those gaps here oops almost lost my stitch so into between those double crochet stitches where chain one was we crochet single crochet stitches one two and three three single crochet stitches into each gap so again i'm not counting i know what i'm doing and you also can follow or count and listen <laughs> so if you want to share your uh, photos you can send them um, to me in messenger of this uh, my business page Irish Crochet Lab on Facebook I know that there is no way of um, posting uh, photos but I think you can make posts I, I'm not sure how to check but if you want to share with me what you crochet and how it look like you can just send me a message there in that page I'm talking about Irish Crochet Lab page on Facebook. Uh, those of you who are a member of Irish Crochet Lab uh, and you are a member of my private Facebook group, you can post your photos of your work there. <coughs> also, I want to have opportunity since I'm crocheting and not counting my video tutorials lessons that teach you traditional and modern Irish crochet is right now on sale. It's 75% off. It's only $25. So those of you who want to continue and uh, learn Irish crochet from A to Z, you can uh, check out my webs uh, website, irishcrochetlab.com. Okay, we almost finishing with third uh, petal and I need to make my slip stitch here at the end. So I made all three single crochet stitches in each little arch, slip stitch. And now we have to connect our petal to the second petal. Again, the same way we count three stitches, the third stitch right here before pico this is where we connect and when we connect pick up both loops of the stitch otherwise you will stretch your work your stitch over the padding cord connecting with single crochet stitch like that now turn your work so this is how it will look like uh, you can um, before I will go 
you can slightly pull on a cord if your uh, petal is not flat. My petal is quite flat, so I will just slightly move my petting cord like this. Hello, Sandra. Okay, like this. And now we can turn our work. This is how everything will look like when you connect it to the petal. Now we will crochet the edge of the petal. We need to turn our work this way. And we will crochet over the padding cord. Into the back loops of each stitch on the edge here. And it's important to find that first stitch where we can go. So I kind of turn my work a little bit as you can see. Also I need to adjust padding cord in the wrong place. Padding cord always have to be between your stitch on a hook and between the thread like this and crochet three single crochet stitches and then we're following exactly the same pattern for every petal three single crochet stitches and pico so here's our pico and each edge of the petal has that first we make three single crochet and pico and we repeat this seven times and then we finish and continue our petal only with single crochet stitches so as you can see that the um, pattern is calling for a little bit different uh, you know not finished with picos all through their work and um, you can try you can try and crochet and see how it will look like you can add picos all the way to the very end <clears throat> so in a minute i will just finish those three single crochet stitches here and i will adjust my padding cord make sure that my padding cord is not showing anywhere so the most important part is to take a rid of that corner that your padding cord won't be showing there now <clears throat> Again, Pico. So all of you who... <clears throat> I don't know how you ladies finding me on, on the internet about my vid videos or... Uh, video tutorials that I have I also have this not just this channel on YouTube I have a website and website is uh, the link to this I always put um, at the end in comments not in comments in description for the videos that I make so um, you can always go and check out irishcrochetlab.com and see what I have there Right now, there we have um, a crochet marathon. Normally, marathon is run every day, but um, I'm not sure how busy you are. I cannot come and do it every single day. So this is for you. I posted on my website some uh, video tutorials, uh, crochet patterns, videos, and if you go to my website, there will be right away when you open the first page, there will be pop-up window. 
uh, in the pop-up pop window, uh, you can read all information. It's about Crochet Marathon. You can join it and crochet. If you will click the button there on that page, it will take you exactly to the page um, that is called uh, Crochet Marathon. And there you can click on each picture and see what you can get. Uh, you have there and crochet patterns for some motifs. Um, it's all absolutely free. You can just use it. Mm, please respect my copyright. So, those of you who want to teach also, you cannot use my materials, anybody's materials for that matter. You can teach how to make classical motifs, but if there is something designed by um, me or by someone else, you cannot teach using our materials. You have to create your own course <clears throat> and design something on your own. But please check out my website and see um, what this crochet marathon is all about. There are some, um, I added some video tutorials for beautiful shamrocks, different kind of shamrocks, different styles you can use for uh, your Irish crochet. You also can find their crochet patterns. So each picture is a link, active link. And you can go there and um, spend your time since we're all at home right now. It's quite uh, difficult to manage quarantine. So those of you who love to crochet can spend your time with the hook and thread and have a good time. So now I have all my seven uh, picots. I can continue just with single crochet stitches. Make sure, make sure that your stitches are con uh, uniformed and the same size, nice and tight. Pay attention to that you crochet enough of your single crochet stitches here that you go to the all the way where the last double crochet stitch was and make your last stitch there. I think I'm done here. There is no one more stitch I need to make and I cannot push my hook in there. I always make videos and I'm afraid, what if I'll poke myself <laughs> during the video and I'll have to stop crochet. <laughs> okay, last single crochet stitch. And before I connect my petal to the rectangle um, netting, you can see I have a bunch of misbehaved strands, uh, strands of padding cord. And this is what I'm going to do. I have to adjust them, pull on each one of them to make sure they are not showing anywhere. like this. Now let's look at the diagram and see where we have to connect our uh, third petal. Third petal, when you finished your last edge, this edge of the petal, follow the arrow on those dots. Over the padding cord you connect, create one, two, three connect three times one stitch as you can see you see that shows this little dot here those little dots or three dots or how many dots they show you where to go which way to connect so first single crochet into the first arch 
second single crochet right in here into the second and this stitch into the third arch this is how we connect so let's do that so over the padding cord now um, there is also one thing here here is my bed uh, my uh, crochet here's my first arch if I will connect to it will I how this will look like I can connect there I can connect to the second and to the third this is what three stitches have to go by doing this this will help me to create this kind of uh, put this rectangle make it smaller and create out of it that oval shape this is why it's becoming oval instead because those stitches where you connect they helping you to shape or reshape the rectangle i actually will go with first two stitches into the second arch it's just the way it's asking for it so instead of going into the first arch i am going into the second arch twice let me just fix my thread here okay one more time so i'm going with two stitches first into my second arch of the rectangle two stitches there and the last stitch third one into the next arch and make sure that padding cord is not showing of course especially on the front and you cannot see that on the back I always look for the transition last stitch of the petal and those connected stitches I don't want to see my padding cord anywhere if you see slightly a little bit like few like one millimeters little slightly pieces it's okay but not too much of it so here it is this is how my piece look like so we have the one part is done kind of this this area now we will crochet this petal um leaflet i don't know what to call this it's not a petal petals are those and this is going to be a little um branch so we will crochet only over the padding cord 18 stitches and then we will crochet three leaves they are done very easily and very uh, easy to follow so also follow again the thick line the red line it's over the padding cord watch where you have to drop padding cord and pick up again and those arrows right here these little arrows they show you which way to go again so we will crochet first this single uh, crochet stitches over the padding cord then we will crochet one leaf then second then third and then we will connect again back we'll come back to the stem and crochet over the stem over the padding cord into the stitches before right there and then we will continue crochet the other part of our motif so here it is this is what we have to do so let's first make uh, talk a little bit about the first leaf the second leaf have slightly different um, pattern but first and third are the same exactly the same only watch for those arrows so first after 18 stitches of a stem we crochet again 18 stitches for the leaf then drop padding cord and crochet this way second row five single crochet stitches have double five double crochet have double two single crochet turn your work and crochet three single crochet stitches have double five double crochet stitches have double three single crochet stitches after that pick up padding cord and make single crochet stitch over the padding cord turn your work you see that 
and crochet 14 stitches, single crochet stitches over the padding cord into the back loops. By the way, here also into the back loops, all of the each row, every single row we crochet of uh, into back loops. So the edge also over the padding cord, 14 stitches first, and then the last three stitches that will be on this side, they go into the stitch in the last three stitches of the first row on the padding cord. After that, you follow the red line, the red arrow over the padding cord, you make 20 single crochet stitches, then drop your padding cord and crochet leaf first, first two arrows, uh, rows, then again, exactly the same way. There's nothing different. Each leaf is done exactly the same way. Only first, second, others, and third are the same, and second leaf have different amount of stitches. So watch for those numbers here. Number three, number six, three, first at the beginning and at the end tells you about single crochet stitches. In the middle numbers right here, those are double crochet stitches. But there's no number for half double. Half double you always know you make three, um, three or five of how many single crochet stitches and before you start with double crochet stitch you always make your half double. Here it is, half double, um, here, half double. So you have to watch for that because they are not uh, kind of they are in the diagram but there are no number for them. It's always one half double crochet stitch. Uh, a little different part here that I wanted you to pay attention when you will make your finish your uh, edge of the second leaf uh, last two stitches are decrease increase I'm sorry decrease uh, you make two single crochet stitches over the padding cord but together as one and the same you repeat here the same when you finish the third leaf at the very end you crochet two single crochet stitches together I will show you how to do it it's actually very easy so let's start let's start this pattern let's make our I will turn it in such a way that I would see it and I can crochet and you can see at least something I'm trying to figure out how to lay it better but it's not very easy for me here My table is not very big. I don't think you see. Oh, you can see it. Okay. Okay, so let's pick up our stitch where we finished and make our branch. Branch with three leaves. I think it's branch. What else to call it, right? Oops, I'm sorry. I just shaked my camera. So now let's crochet 18 single crochet stitches over the padding cord only. One. <clears throat> Two. Three. Actually, I will move this book away. It's on my way. I cannot do anything. And I need to see it at the same time. I cannot have it in front of me. Okay. I think it's good now. Okay, how many I made? Three, right? Three stitches. Let's continue. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, eleven, twelve. Hello, Susanna. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. So this is eighteen stitches for our um. Stem. Now another set of 18 stitches for the leaf. So just continue. Continue the same way. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, <clears throat> nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, six, fifteen, <laughs> sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. It's very important to count, right? So now make sure that your fading cord is not showing anywhere. I will just slightly push them next to each other. You can you don't have to do that with a stem. Your stem has to be straight by the diagram according to the diagram on the picture. But um even if it will a little bit slightly curved or whatever, it's not a big deal, I believe still look beautiful okay now uh, we made 18 stitches again second time for the leaf drop padding cord and we will crochet the body of the leaf that's how it will look like your work and now we will crochet we don't need padding cord I will just use like that and first row for the leaf is coming, um, going this way. Five single crochet stitches. Don't forget, we crochet into the back loop of each stitch. Two, three, four, and five. Then half double. have double crochet, then five double crochet stitches, one, two, three, four, and five. Then half double. So you can follow diagram with me uh, looking at the book. I just looking at the diagram and tell you what I do. And then two single crochet. So first row of the leaf is done. This is how it will look like. Turn your work and crochet second row of your leaf. Second row will be three single crochet stitches again going into the back loops one two three half double five double crochet stitches one two three, four, and five. Then have double crochet and three single. Please don't forget only back loops. Crochet in the back loops if you want to achieve that beautiful texture that all Irish crochet motifs have. Second row of your leaf is done. Now pick up padding cord and crochet one single crochet stitch over the padding cord. Now turn your work again into the back loops over the padding cord. Crochet the edge of the leaf, finishing the leaf. 14 stitches at first we make. So 
over the padding cord and don't forget back loops. And for some reason not counting, I need to count one, two, three, four, <clears throat> five, six, seven. Let me stop here and make sure you see I have the padding cord showing itself and between stitches you can see it so you don't want that to happen. All you have to do is just pick up your Padding cord, each strand at the time, not at once, just each strand of the time, and pull on it, and then all the stitches disappear, the thread disappear, you cannot see it. And continue crochet. Um, now I see some questions, probably, or whatever it is. Um, in Spanish, if you ladies, um, I hope you understand what I am teaching. I teach in English, but I don't know Spanish. If you have questions and you type, you, you have to type in English because I don't know Spanish language to answer you. And again, I forgot to count my stitches. <laughs> um, but it's okay. I know how many has to go in here, so... I know I'm at the end, I make my 14 stitch right there, 14 stitches, again I will adjust and make sure that padding cord is not showing anywhere. And according to the diagram, we need to make uh, three single crochet stitches right here into this stem area, right there. Three single crochet stitches there. Also over the padding cord and into the back loops. So go with your hook right there. One. two and three and again my stitches need to be um, the padding cord is kind of showing there Here it is. Now, next leaf, we just continue crochet. Uh, for the second leaf, that middle part, we crochet 20 single crochet stitches over the padding cord first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Slightly move stitches kind of together so that they will be the padding cord is not showing anywhere drop your padding cord and crochet leaf pattern for the leaf is slightly different than the first one and it is five single crochet stitches crochet into the back loops only one two three four five 
then have double crochet and six double crochet stitches one two three four five and six have double and um, three single crochet stitches at the end here one two three three single crochet stitches now turn your work so first row of the leaf is done here like this now we go into the back loops again second row for the leaf it will be three single crochet stitches one two and three then have double crochet then seven double crochet stitches one two three four oops I skipped skip skipped four five six seven then we have have double and three single crochet stitches one two three i'm not really stopping at uh, leaves too much i go really fast because we already have some motifs that are similar how to make leaves uh, so i'm more interested here to show an entire piece of the motif to show how which part is connected and where so single crochet stitch over the padding cord and now turn and crochet into the back loops over the padding cord the edge of the leaf first thing we have to crochet 16 stitches two three four five six seven eight nine ten so I will stop and adjust the padding cord So it will not be anywhere so we have six, 10 11 12 13 oops twelve thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 16. My 16 stitch is going into that bump over there. It's easiest place to put it. And then we have to make one single crochet stitch. Remember I told you there are two single crochet stitches together first. I cannot see my stitches very well. Let me see something here. Okay, 
So here, into that stem of that second leaf, first, at first we make one single crochet, and then two single crochet together to decrease. So we go into the stitch first, one, not continue this, go into the next stitch again, here, three stitches on the hook over the padding cord, this is your two single crochet stitches together. And pull on the padding cord because your padding cord will be here, definitely misbehaving. I pulled together this time, all strands. It's done uh, here on purpose that your stitches kind of will stay like that, those two together. Okay. Now, the third leaf is done the same way as the first. So, this time we go and crochet over the padding cord only. Here's our work. 18 single crochet stitches again. Two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, seventeen, and eighteen. I was going fast, it's nothing to learn here, we are learning how to make the entire motif, but not how to crochet with the padding cord, so I hope you understood. So I went really really fast here, drop your padding cord, turn your work, and crochet your leaf exactly the same way as the first leaf, 5 single crochet stitches, 2, three, four, and five, then have double crochet stitch, then um, five double crochet stitches, one, two, three, four, and five, and then you can make half double crochet and three single crochet stitches, three single crochet stitches, two and three. Okay, then turn your work, and this time we crochet three single crochet stitches <clears throat> three single crochet stitches don't forget crochet into the back loops then half double then five double crochet stitches one oops one two three, four, and five. Then half double crochet stitch, and then three single crochet stitches. One, two, three. Then after that, pick up padding cord, single crochet over the padding cord, and then turn your work and crochet leaf on the other side into the back loops over the padding cord. And we crochet all the way to the end, 14 stitches first on the edge of the uh, leaf, then we'll pick up um, and crochet three stitches over the stem 
for the leaf just to finish that side um, so don't forget to fix that padding cord here that <clears throat> so we continue crochet on the other second edge side of the leaf over the padding cord make sure to follow all those stitches to make sure that you got all of them then one stitch always go into this bumpy area because stitch there is very difficult to see so 14 stitch 14th again I will adjust my padding cord slightly quickly Seems to me I missed something here. No, mm -mm. everything is fine. And um, three more stitches left to crochet right here. over the padding cord also one two and three okay where's my thread is running somewhere I see I have here a knot that I'll have to rid of somehow okay something you will see how I deal with this see my thread has a knot here it's okay at least you will see how I deal with this kind of stuff so but we'll have to get to that point first so now we made this uh, three leaves they are finished now we have to crochet let me put my um oh nice i lost a stitch let me find it first that's why i always tell you stretch your last stitch so that you will not lose it so all three stitches now let's see let me put my work the way it should be so here it is the leaf will be like this funky looking okay really weird so don't worry about this it's all okay my makes more sense when you fix it and connect all together so you see it's kind of unruly look like right but don't worry about this what we will do just pick up your work and do this so here's your last stitch and last leaf right now here's your second leaf i put it on top of the third and here's that first leaf i also put like that one leaf on another just hold it together when you do that this is when your uh, stem come in your vision very easy you can see it very well so 
I will again release it to show you what to do. So here's your first, uh, third leaf. Then if you follow the way they lay in on your hands, then second, the one middle leaf. And here is the third, first leaf. And then a stem. So this is where we will crochet. 18 single crochet stitches right now. So let's pick up our thread. Here's our stitch, our padding cord. And we will crochet. <clears throat> Let's find that stitch right in here, right in here for a single crochet stitch and then continue crocheting. Don't worry about that, it's kind of you should have that first stitch really, really tight. And uh, don't worry about the padding cord yet, we will fix it in a minute. At least a few stitches to make and then we'll fix it. So second single crochet, we just crochet single crochet stitches. Don't forget into the back loops of the padding cord. At least five, six or seven stitches to make here and then you can fix. Okay, I will stop here stretch your last stitch now you see how it look like now i can pull on a padding cord slightly again i have to use one strand at the time <coughs> like this and make sure that your stem is not curvy. So what you needed to do, you have to pay attention. Here's the leaf. This heart look like. You have to make it uh, pay attention that you will not see the padding cord anywhere here. This area is little. You can, you know, if you like pearls, you can put some pearl inside if you don't want to see that gap. But it's okay to see it. It's fine. It's just the way pattern goes. So here now it's kind of making more sense, right? All this unruly leaves, they kind of get into its space. Okay, let's go and continue crochet over the padding cord. Here over that stem, we'll finish it and then we will have to connect that stem to the uh, rectangle, our uh, matted rectangle. So here we don't count on any stitches. Um, and let me see, I had a question a long time ago, I didn't see. Stephanie asking, is there a beginner's video you do? Understand what you're doing? I think I should learn from beginning. Uh, yes, Stephanie, I do have um, video tutorials. And let me type it for you here underneath the answer. You can go to my website. Oops. You can go to my website and learn everything about uh, my video tutorials. I do have video tutorials um, from the very, very beginning, how to start all stitches, everything. And I teach there um, and modern and traditional Irish crochet. Also, um, I um, my video tutorials right now on sale, they're 75% off. Uh, so you can check it out by visiting my website. So my video tutorials, just to let you know, all you will find, all information and details before you buy it, 
You can go and read everything, what is included in those video tutorials. I have more than, uh, I would say, 150 or more than that motifs to crochet. I have uh, projects to learn how to make. Um, you will have there from the website you can download and video tutorials and crochet patterns for motifs I uh, proposed you to make. So um, basically to start you can, it will be enough. So let's see, our stem is done. All I have to do just adjust it that it will be actually nice and neat here. And you already know how I do that. I just pick up strands one at the time of the padding cord, strands of the padding cord and pull on the, the on each And so make sure that um, by putting here on the on the padding cord, you can make it all straight or like that. You can pull a little bit like this. Let me show you. You can pull a little bit more. And you see what's going on with the leaf. It's just kind of become a little bit curvy not as straight and why not to make it curvy slightly curvy like this okay now let's look we need to connect this piece this is the face of our um, the right side of our work like that and we have to connect one more time to the netted um, rectangle. Let's look at the pattern, see where they lead us with that. And then we will crochet our petals again, the petals on the other side, and I will explain how to make stem and this center for them, um, how to finish the motif. So we made the stem of that um, branch and we have to connect with three single crochet stitches. Uh, we have this last three arches on the rectangle, so we will connect into third, actually it's uh, one, two, three, four, fourth arch with one stitch and three stitches into this arch. And then we will crochet a petal. And petal, this and this are identical, then this and that, this is kind of like you take in this part of the petals and flip it the other direction. So all that was here on that side will be in reverse on the other side. And this is how we will crochet. Let's connect this first. So we will connect with one stitch here into that arch. You see where I'm going, right? We have last three arches here, one arch on the corner and those two. So one stitch goes here and three stitches goes in there. This is what they want us to make. So for a single crochet stitch over the padding cord connected and three single crochet stitches right there. One, two, uh, one, two, and three. And before I go, I will, uh, and crochet the rest, I will of course adjust my padding cord here. Yeah, I really don't like that I have this part here. I'm not sure how to deal with this, but I will have to figure out something. I cannot cut my thread now because I'm crocheting over the padding cord. <clears throat> uh, we'll see. So now 
After this, we have to make our uh, leaf from for the flower. Let's look quickly how and when and what to connect. So we will crochet now only over the padding cord. We will make that leaf. Uh, you could see where to connect the after the last double crochet to the first arch here in the corner. Then when you will come pick up padding, uh, padding cord and connect to one of those leaves that I just made right now. Uh, not leaves but stitches. So your arch um, arched uh, petal when you will arch it and turn it into the uh, round petal you connect right here where i am i made my three single crochet stitches there according to diagram this is where you connect this petal here then you crochet everything exactly the same way i will not explain the meaning of all this your uh, petal connect to the other side now all petals all three petals we will crochet uh, connect this time to the other side of our uh, netted rectangle and so the first petal will be connected somewhere here into the first uh, have a uh, first double crochet and into the next double crochet and then you crochet second petal and second petal exactly the same way connected to this petal as here before so everything is the same. Let's just quickly continue so that I can show you the most difficult part here, how to connect and how to make center. I will take my um, diagram away um, on another side that I can only see it. You have your own, I hope. And um, I will take my look once in a time. Once in a while, I will look at my diagram, but you will follow me uh, crocheting with me, uh, looking at what I do and how I do that. So let's continue. So now we will have to crochet only over the padding cord our um, first petal, 21 stitches. One, two, three, four, So you see what I did with this knot, it's, I will let it go where it want to go because I can later hide it inside the stitches. For now I cannot do anything about it. Um, I'll just let it go or I could actually hide it into the, together with the padding cord. Not sure how this will work. I guess I will have to then. It's best if I'll do it this way right now. This is the only uh, option I have to crochet over those stitches here. Move it into the padding cord because I will not be, they are too short to weave them in later. So things like that sometimes happen when you have thread um, so, yeah, I think I will be fine. So five, then I will have six, and I crochet over this short tail, so that will be great. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, two. Eleven, twelve, 
13, 14, 15, 16, <coughs> 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Not something I wanted this knot, but uh, hopefully I could even see where it is. But that's all I can do. <laughs> um, things like that happen sometimes. So I will not touch it at this moment. I will fix it later. For now, we will crochet. And uh, another thing, I'm not going to cut the short tails at this moment. This short tail, I will cut them later. Uh, because I will have to pull on a padding cord when I will shape my petal. Remember, I have to make it like this round. So for now, I will leave this. And I hope I will not have any trouble later. Now we will turn our work and crochet our body of the petal. And it's, uh, if you remember the pattern, it goes this way. Chain three. Then uh, skip two into the third single crochet stitch. Chain one, skip one, have double. And then we make chain one, skip one on the padding cord and double crochet stitch. And we have to repeat this eight times for, for the short, uh, for small petal. I think it's supposed to be eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So again, chain one, skip one, double crochet. Chain one, Keep one double crochet into the next stitch. Again, chain one. Skip one double crochet. Chain one. Skip one double crochet. Chain one. Skip one double crochet, and I think I need one more time. Chain one, skip one double crochet. So, after this, for now, this is how it look like, like this. Now. Uh, petal is holding this way. Take only your entire work, entire motif, like this, and turn. And we will connect right here into that first loop right there with a single crochet. And I'm not showing diagram anymore, but I can. So here how it look like now, you see? This what you connected and your leaf naturally will turn into the right spot. Okay? Now, after this, after we connect it, now you turn an entire work again. This together with the leaf now, and we will crochet into this gaps where chain one we will crochet three single crochet stitches into each gap.
and make sure you have all your stitches done correctly you have to count otherwise um, your petal will not be as beautiful and curvy um, not enough stitches it's going to damage your motif so you have to be precise one stitch when you miss somewhere it's okay but if you are continuously skipping somewhere stitches that could be a problem so please count your stitches And uh, what I like about these patterns here in Japanese books, you uh, the way they um, put numbers on the stitches for you so that you don't have to basically sit and count every single stitch. So you see, I get to that point where this <laughs> thread, unexpected thread appeared that I needed to hide. We'll see how this will behave for me. So now I will make my slip stitch here in the corner. Remember, we have a slip stitch right there. Now, I will have to turn this an entire piece, not the leaf, entire piece. Now, how nice. My hook ran away. Okay, entire piece, and we will have to connect our petal right there between the branch and between the base, right into the spot. spot. And since I have that extra unexpected piece, I'd rather do it right now before I connect. So I will stretch my last stitch, and I have to make my uh, petal really rounded. So I will hold and the padding cord at this piece and I will make out of it something. <laughs> I hope it will work out, look like it's working okay. Don't like it, don't like it, but what can I do? Nothing. Just appeared there. But it looks like we're going to be okay, so I curved it, and you know what, since I have to connect and a lot of things going on, I will cut that piece off, that short piece of thread that I don't, don't need at all. Okay, so after you made your petal connected to the area between the stem of the little branch right in the middle here with a single crochet stitch and a padding cord. like this like this so it's connected now watch very carefully now we have to I will put my padding cord here now we have to turn our entire work because on this side because we will crochet the edge over the padding cord and remember into the back loops of each stitch so first time looking for that stitch I cannot really it's very difficult when you do videos to see the stitches here and 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 my padding cord in the wrong place. How did you get here? Okay. So three single crochet stitches. Remember the pattern, right? Three single crochet stitches pico. Now pico, one, two, and three. Uh, sometimes picos look better when you made them out of for five stitch a chain 
chain four or five but um, it depends also on the thread and probably motif also you know have to be we'll have different tastes so i know a lot of ladies like to have uh, longer picos um, i'm okay with pico that made on a chain three so and i will stop here for a little to adjust my padding cord because it's showing itself between my stitches and sometimes it does not want to go away so you have to go twice And we continue. <clears throat> so pico first here after three stitches. And continue crochet. And remember right that we have only seven picos for each side of the um, petal. One, two, and three, and pico one, two, three. Connect pico with a slip stitch. As you notice throughout the whole entire video, I uh, stop quite often to readjust and fix padding cord. Um, I don't know how others uh, have, do they have the same problem, but padding cord is kind of stuck between, happen to cut between the stitches and you have to adjust it, you have to rid of the uh, pieces that you can see, it's not looking beautiful. And what I noticed that when you crochet over the pink cord that has only uh, two strands, when you crochet it, uh, fold it in half on it once. But today motif we make and uh, we have a thicker padding cord with four strands. And uh, of course, uh, padding cord cut between stitches. And this is not what you want. I like to stop more often. You see, this is what I'm talking about. I like to stop more often and fix this because it's easier to crush, uh, to fix when you crochet um, five to 10 stitches, not more than that. Especially when you crochet on the round, when it's a straight line, it's easier to fix, but on the round, you can damage your motif. So, this is why I stop quite often and uh, fix this. <clears throat> okay, one, two, three, four, five, two more picos, and we can continue with next petal. So, next pico. <clears throat> <clears throat> I hope you can see everything well. Uh, my hands quite moving a lot up and down, and not because I'm such a sloppy uh, <laughs> person or something. It's very uh, difficult to make videos like that, especially when you use fine thread. And I want to show everything. It sometimes can be quite impossible because uh, I'm looking at my stitches through the camera. Then my phone is hanging over my hands. If I sometimes have tendency to move my hands closer to this, is probably 
when my hands on a camera disappearing somewhere or moving to the right left <laughs> elsewhere um, so please forgive me for that because I also need to see sometimes what I do not just through the camera but in real life um, so I will adjust again my padding cord and then we will connect our petal to the Okay, and that knot that I had before, you cannot even see where it is now. Great, because I worried about it, how it will look like. So now we have this. You see, I always, if you pull on the padding cord too much and your petal kind of curvy or not flat anymore, you can always come and kind of stretch your stitches a little bit here. Okay, here's our motif. This is. Now we need to connect that petal. Let's see where it is connected on the diagram. I posted, uh, turned my diagram on a side, so easier to see. So here's our petal finished. We need to connect on the other side of the rectangular um, net netting and connect two single crochet stitches into the first double crochet and into the next. So on the other side of our rectangular net netting, we have double crochet stitches here. So we will connect to those stitches. And we connect with over the padding cord. Here's one and into the next one. And make sure you also don't see padding cord anywhere. After that, we crochet our next petal. The next petal, as you remember, is the same, is the same pattern as this. We make 27 single crochet stitches over the padding cord. So I'm not showing diagram for that petal, only into the places that are important. Right now we are doing well, we just crocheting the same thing we already made four times. It's our petals and they have the same pattern. Only two petals have 27 stitches for the padding cord. So two, three, four, five, and I will count this because I need to be, to have exact number. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So we're doing fine. Now we're dropping our padding cord and basically what we're doing, we already know we make Crochet the body of the petal. <clears throat> and crochet this way. One, two, three, chain three, a single crochet, skip two, one, two, into the third stitch, I remember, right? Actually not. Skip three and then the fourth, I'm sorry. One, two, three, into the fourth stitch single crochet, then chain one, skip one into the next stitch, have double, then skip one and double crochet stitches. After this point we crochet only double crochet stitches. chain 
one, skip one, have a uh, double crochet. And we need them 11. So if you want, you can count exact amount, but you always will end up, if you made 27 stitches over the padding cord, you will end up in the right amount of double crochet stitches. The most important part also to skip only one stitch on your first row. Skip one, double crochet, chain one. So after making at least one side of your petals, you of course will remember the second part because it's almost like a mirror reflection only turned onto um, 180 degrees I think I need to make more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Let's see, do I have eleven? I think I have here extra stitches. Have double. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I need one more. One more right into this area. Somehow I got miscounted something. Did I skip? You see, I'm telling you what not to do and I did it myself. Well, that's interesting because on a diagram it says skip three and get into four at the very beginning. I don't want to undo it. It's not a big deal. One stitch um, skip or not not a big deal okay now we will have to connect holding this we will have to turn only our entire motif and connect with a single crochet stitch to the netted rectangle let me see where exactly we have to connect into the second double crochet into this right here right there and only now we crochet we turn an entire motif and crochet three single crochet stitches into those gaps and we do it fast because we need I need to show you how to finish this two and three three stitches now again one two and three I think that uh, crocheting this motif uh, with fine thread will be way easier. Um, and the reason I'm saying that because um, everything's small, you really cannot see imperfections. I do not worry really about imperfections because um, <sighs> And naturally kind of trying to be really really perfect with all your crochet but um, when you're learning when you crochet with fine thread sometimes not even when you're learning when I crochet with fine thread and when you crochet a lot you're tired or something you can sometimes skip stitches it's easier to see mistakes with thicker thread but when you crochet something with fine thread this is what actually saves us <laughs> this is what makes us um, our work like okay there's no nobody will see nobody will look at the small uh, motif 
try, of course, not to skip your stitches, but if something skipped, um, continue crochet, don't uh, unravel your work. Okay, at the end of this uh, piece, this row, I will uh, make my slip stitch. Make my slip stitch, and then we have to connect our petal to the petal before that. So what we do, we turn like that. I will pull a little bit on my padding cord first to curve the petal. And if I need to curve more, I can do it later. So we pick up padding cord and we go into the previous, this petal right here before and count stitches from pico, three stitches to the right. And connect with single crochet a stitch over the padding cord. <clears throat> um, and before I go anywhere with this, I rather fix it if I need to. If I see that my padding cord is probably need to pull more, just slightly, so that it will make more sense like this. Now I have to crochet over the padding cord. So turn all entire work. We will crochet the edge of the on the edge of the petal. So I found the right stitch. We're going into the back loops and make first three single crochet. Then pico. And again, go into the back loops over the padding cord. I only turn uh, once um, when I look for the back loop of my first stitch. And it's only on that tip right here when we turn, it's not easy to see. Other than that, it's easy. It's not a big deal. So again, I have to see this part if i pull on a padding cord you would see how this watch this how it's easy uh, and it's disappearing when i pull on each strand one piece gone you could see it moving right then another and one more and if it's slightly a little piece is visible but just tiny teeny tiny then it's okay as soon as it's not bulky there, uh, corner, and uh, you don't see too much, this is what we need. And again, pico. Like this. And then when I go into my back loops, you just see your, your hook is just leading you. It's leading you always in the right uh, place. And of course, like I right now crochet, I am not really looking at my magnifying glass through my magnifying glass to see my stitches better. And uh, it's a little bit difficult to crochet this way, but uh, when you will have a magnifying glasses, or 
for magnifying glass that uh, will help you see your stitches. You will not miss anything. You will see every stitch out there. And I do recommend uh, stitches, uh, magnifying glass, because um, it's not good for your eyes to sit and look for those stitches somewhere there. Magnifying glasses is um, a must. They are must. So again, it's three stitches and then pico. And again, I will stop for readjusting uh, the padding cord that cut between stitches. Again, we go and make three single crochet, two and three, and pico, one, two, three, four, five, six, last pico, and then just finish with single crochet stitches. And sorry, my hands are going away again. <laughs> I So we crochet all the way to the very right this place just with single crochet stitches to finish our uh, petal. Oh my goodness, we are going for the fourth hour of our lesson. <laughs> I just hope we will finish this before uh, four o'clock. It's a really long motif. Um, first time I was making it took me five hours, but I was um, also looking at the um, diagram and it takes time when you look at diagram but when you know already how to make it um, first time and second and few more motifs you make and then they will go faster when you basically memorize your uh, pattern so let's see i think i need one more stitch here or even two more two more stitches i believe No, I think I'm fine. Let's see. Yeah, there is no more room. So first, before I will connect to the middle part of our motif, I will again go and uh, fix my padding cord because it's stuck in stitches and doesn't look really good. Now I can look how it is. I still have few, so now I have to look this way. Okay, now I have to adjust and fix this part. Okay, look fine now. So 
So when it's, if it's too, like, creates ruffle effect, you have to stretch your stitches a little bit. When it's curving inside and create like a cup or hat shape, you have to pull on a cord a little bit more. Okay, now we need to connect. And this um, petal connecting basically to the uh, last part right here in our rectangle. Here's rectangle, what is left. So we connect right into this double crochet stitch here one time and the last time into that place over there right here. So on the diagram, let me just show it to you. On the diagram it will look like this. So here's our petal. We connect to the last double crochet and to the, no, to this double crochet and the second stitch to that in the very first one. Right here. And then we create another petal, the last petal. The last petal and hopefully it will go really really fast for us so let's connect this petal to the main uh, rectangle we crochet again connect with single crochet stitches uh, and over the padding cord so one stitch right there and another stitch right here right there like this and pull on the padding cord slightly like this make sure it's not showing anywhere okay next step last petal and last petal for last petal we crochet of the padding cord 21 stitch 21 single crochet stitches one two three four five Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, <clears throat> thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21. Now we drop in padding cord and crochet turn, crochet our petal and the pattern is, I uh, hope you memorized it, I do remember, 1, 2, 3, then skip 1, 2, 3 into the fourth stitch, and then one chain one skip one have double and after that we make double crochet stitches separated by chain one and um, skipping one stitch at the bottom stitches on the padding cord we will have to have eight stitches eight double crochet stitches my hands are tired <laughs> four hours when you crochet at home it's not a video tutorial you just can get up you can go places i can take my dogs for a walk i never never sit like that all the time for hours it's not good for you but since it's lesson i just cannot stand up and go <laughs> i'll have to finish this and then I will take my dogs for a walk. Okay. The 
last stitch here. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, skip one, go in here. Okay, last double crochet stitch. This is how it will look like, how it's layout. But then you holding this leaf and turn only your entire work like that and connect your double crochet stitch connect the petal to this corner that beginning corner where we started our first stitch crochet there have a double crochet i'm sorry single crochet stitch здравствуйте надежда um, so those of you who are confused what did I just said, <laughs> I just see that some ladies coming uh, to my um, lessons and they are Russian speaking and uh, Russian and Ukrainian are my languages, my native languages. So I just told her hello. So some of you will learn here also some Russian, probably Ukrainian language. You are welcome. Okay, so now you see I'm not even saying anything what we do. All I am just doing, I... Uh, <laughs> Just quietly crochet because we repeat the same thing and um, I kind of trying to save my voice <laughs> not counting and saying exactly each stitch I make so we're making uh, continuing uh, gaps into the into each gap between double crochet stitch we make our single crochet stitches and at the end have the last arch we make three single crochet stitches here and two and three and then um, slip stitch right there slip stitch now this is our last stitch and that last stitch will be we need to connect i'm sorry not last stitch last petal oh, yeah you can see i'm tired because i say things that are not <laughs> instead of uh, petal i said stitch so let's look very carefully at what's happening this is where we are this is how you your work supposed to look after the last stitch you just made this last petal here when we're on side of course so now we need to connect this petal over there okay so i will curve it first pulling on the padding cord slightly creating the curve and it's just look like enough curve to connect my petal to the petal before so let's pick up our padding cord now count three stitches from the pico to the right one two and three and connect here with single crochet stitch like that after that after you connect now you turn your work all of it like this like that and um, now we will finish crocheting over the padding cord our finish our petal first so going into the back loops of each stitch first we crochet three single crochet stitches Then pico and continue this seven times and then finish an entire 
petal just with single crochet stitches. And once in a while, don't forget to adjust your padding cord. One, two, and three. Three. I will stretch my petal again, readjust my padding cord. And continue crochet. So first I have to make pico here. Oh wow, well, well, my my hook stuck in the wrong place again. Again stuck in the wrong place. Okay, pico made successfully after struggling <laughs> so we're finishing ladies we're finishing we're almost done a little bit and <clears throat> and you will have beautiful motif Again, going into the back loops. And make our pico. And of course I will stop and adjust this padding cord because on the back you see it looks kind of not, I call it not clean, <laughs> uh, not neat, the right word in English, not neat. And now it's look nice, you don't see your padding cord anywhere, this is what you want to achieve, neatness neatness and, and again neatness it's very important when you crochet your Irish lace I would say not just Irish lace everything we make we have to be nice and neat about this spending so much time crocheting you want it to look nice again one two and three Now pico, <clears throat> again going into the, did I move my hands again, <laughs> again three single crochet stitches, let's see how many picos I already have here, one, two, three, four, five, two more picos and then And one more pico and then we can go and finish just with single crochet stitches and then uh, very little left to crochet stem and the middle part of motif and the middle part of motif actually is the most um, difficult I would say not the even not even the motif itself uh, not those petals and how we connect them unusual way very unusual but uh, the middle part is quite different it's something that is um, so you see how my padding cord you could see it it's look 
not really beautiful. So what we do? We adjusting the padding cord, pick up each strand at the time, and slowly pull on it. And if it's not enough, sometimes you still have some strands, just go and do it again one more time. And don't worry, I, I'm closing it right now because I want to feel that each strand actually gone. And if it's too much, you can always pull and stretch your motifs, motif here to give it shape that it was before that it will be actually flat. And another thing that, you know, when it's a little bit curvy and kind of misbehaving, you uh, block your motif and it will be, it will look nice. Okay, so now I still have to connect my motif, my petal, now to this bottom part. And according to the, let's look at the diagram. So here's my last petal. Here it is. I finished it. And now I will skip here one, two, and three stitches and connect with three single crochet stitches over the padding cord to this area. And of course, we will connect to each stitch. Then we will make uh, stem 20 single crochet stitches and back over the padding cord 19 stitches and after that I will show you the middle part so let's do that okay so we skip here one two three and go into the next stitches into the next stitches right or over them don't worry, it's kind of unusual, but so one, then into the next stitch, two, and three. And we will adjust a little bit our padding cord in a minute. So for now, we just crocheted our single crochet stitches here just to adjust. And you see how it is, it does not look really nice. So what we have to do? Again, take our st uh, strands of padding cord and pull on it. Pull on it one by one. And this is how it looks like now. Okay, now, after that, stem. So look how cute it is, look how beautiful this motif is, this right here. Of course my uh, little branch is kind of misbehaving right now, it does not matter if it wants to go the, lay down this way, why not? It's up to you. I actually like the wrong side even more than the right side of the motif. Looks really pretty. Let's do the stem. Stem first. So now we crochet only over the padding cord. Single crochet stitches, 20. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Now, there is one more thing. Uh, do you want your stem straight or a little bit curvy like that curved on one side it's up to you to decide you can keep it straight or you can just pick up your padding cord and 
holding your stitches, pull on a cord slightly. You pulled on it, you made it shorter, and it will curve. You see? And leave it like that. Now we will go back and crochet. <coughs> and the more you curve or pull on a, a padding cord, the more um, curve you will receive. So you don't have to go, uh, be very careful how much you pull on it. You don't want it too curvy, right? So, okay, now we will crochet over the padding cord. Uh, what I will do, it's easier for me this way, and I will show you what I do. I will fold my padding cord a little bit slightly on the, like that, further, to have this loop here, that I can grab this loop by my pinky. It's very easy to crochet this way and go into the back loops of each stitch of the previous row and crochet over the padding cord into the back loops <coughs> crochet single crochet stitches and when at least some amount of stitches will be done here over this cord this is when you can like this you see i'm holding this way when some I I would say 10 stitches is made. This is when you can um, remove this um, finger like this. So a few stitches are done. Now we can take care of this loop. And all is needed, just take this whole entire piece and pull on it. Now, at the very end, it will not be very neat, so this is when you need to uh, do it one strand by one. One, then another one, third one, and the last one. You see, now it's all nice and neat. And you can continue crochet. Crochet. They said 19 stitches here. I don't count because all is needed to crochet, single crochet stitches into the stem, into available stitches. So that's it. So what is the reason why to count, right? We will not count, we just have to uh, make single crochet stitches into the back loop, always back loop, and over the padding cord. So ladies, don't forget, we're almost at the end of our lesson. Please don't forget to like my videos. This will help me a lot. Um, my videos will be seen then by algorithm of YouTube. It's um, somehow bring this video to more people. So if you like it, please press like. If uh, you don't like it, let me know why you don't like it. <laughs> I really need to know. Mm. This will help me to improve my videos. So you saw what I did. I just fixed my padding cord because stitches were, uh, the padding cord was cut here. And you see how it is? It's just kind of nice and curvy. It's fine. I like it that way. I really don't want straight lines because in the nature, all flowers, they never look straight sticks, right? All of them have some kind of curve. So after that, let's see what they ask us to do, how to connect and where. We'll have to connect our stem also to this area right in the first row. Let's see the diagram. I don't see that they're connecting it to anything, honestly. Huh, interesting. They made slip stitch and they connect, they make right away this part. 
Okay. I will connect. I will connect no matter what. That's what I was doing. I was connecting my stem. Or didn't. Actually, you know what? They are right. I cannot connect now. And the reason I cannot connect? Okay. Everything is fine. We are not connecting. <laughs> okay. So. Here we are. Let me put it in the right position the way it was supposed to be. Like that. This is where we finished. But we still have to make this middle part, the centerpiece, right? And the way it's done, uh, in uh, traditional Irish crochet, there is such term as crocheting uh, raised stitches. Raised stitches is if you crochet something separately and then sew on top of another part of your motif. This is what actually will happen. You can crochet this part separately, or you can crochet the way I will show it to you in a minute. So this is how it look like. It's quite a tedious job and this part can be more difficult than anything else in this motif. So please pay attention how I do that. I will show you exactly. First we go to the diagram. Quickly look at what they are talking about and what they're doing here. So our stamp is, stem is done. After that you see what they do? They make a loop. There's a loop, padding cord, and watch how it's made. Go around and roll it, creating a loop. And then we have to crochet around this doubled. So we had already four strands. We will double this. It will be eight strands of thread under stitches that we're going to crochet over the center. And we will crochet around this loop five single crochet stitches and picots. They do not tell us how exactly, how many stitches to exact stitches we have to fit. The number here is given approximately 90 to 120 stitches. So what I figured, I did not count. I don't know how many stitches I fit. All you need to do, crochet five single crochet stitches, picot, and repeat this around that loop. The loop later, when you crochet this loop, you place this on top of this rectangle area to cover all these connections, all those connected stitches. And also, of course, creating a finishing touch. So let's do this together. There are a few tricks that I want you to pay attention to how I did that, and it works perfectly. So I will turn it that it will be easier to understand. Let me remove on other side my working thread. <clears throat> and make sure that this padding cord, that whatever left, is not tangled anywhere. And I kind of brush it with my fingers for a reason, so they all will be straight. Now, <clears throat> we have to make loop. Remember how they made loop? So you take your padding cord and move it this way. I did something wrong. It's easier to show the way it's on a picture, but it's not easy later to do it. So you push it, pull it on that side, and like this. Okay. And let me show you one more time. It's easier the way they show it, but then the way I do it on a motif, not easy to understand. So let's do it as in a book. Let's move the padding cord this way, and then 
going around like this one time fold it fold it in half then go around this way and like that and we will crochet around this area for me it was easier to do this thing this part and I will show it to you in a minute I will create this loop first then I move it a little bit here like that fold it over my piece over this area on top and there there is a trick how to start where to start this loop has to be exactly the size of this rectangular piece here so let me show you exact again one more time so we go on the other side of our work that will be a tricky part then just laying as in the picture okay like this make fold it in half then take your uh, padding cord and move it around around this way make it smaller 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 don't afraid to move it like this you created that loop this is all you need for now okay now pick it up like this and make sure you start crocheting you fold it you see I put it on top on my area where I have to that I have to cover like this of course size right now does not matter at this point and I will show you how to figure out the right side size of this rectangular piece so here's our loop what is important here that you have four strands and then you start you lay the other part of padding cord on top of that side right here this is where we will start crochet and we will go this direction this way and then we will end up again here at the same area but we will crochet over the eight strands okay and um, when we will crochet at least um, half of it we will still be able to move pulling on this part or on this part right here pulling on it to to adjust the size of the area we have to cover so it's very important how you make this loop okay so let me show you on the motif you can do it the way it was done in a book for me personally it's easier the way i did it right onto the motif so let me show you this my way now so here's my stem here's the padding cord we go around on a loop around this rectangular area like this and here we are that's it now now we will go and crochet very carefully pick it up and I will show it slowly because this is the trickiest part your first stitch have to be really really right here next to the stem exactly next to it so I will go into this loop of eight strands of padding cord and create my first single crochet stitch first single crochet stitch 
On the diagram, they ask to make chain one. I didn't do this chain one. Probably it's wrong. I don't know. Let's do this chain one. <laughs> I will do chain one. And then we go around there. Around this loop and create our single crochet stitch. Single crochet stitch. It's very important that it's this stitch will begin right here and you will not have the gap. So how to remove the gap? Uh, it's easier to make few more stitches. Let's make few more stitches. Let's make five as the pattern asks us. So one, then crochet over the loop only. You see I have I have this loop into my hands where I have eight strands now. One, two, three, four, and five. Don't be too tight here, just normal stitches. So I have my first five stitches I made over this loop. Stretch that last stitch. Okay, now let's look on the back right here. I don't want this those strands of padding cord to be seen right now already. I have to take care of them right the way. The way I do that, I will pick up all these eight strands, holding holding my stitches, I will pull on a strands of thread all together. You see, they're disappearing here. So it's very important. So those stitches of that I just started for the loop, here's they are on a loop, and stitches from that um, a stem are together they are not separated and you don't see your padding cord so this is actually wrong side of the work but it's important so now coming back to our right side and this is what I have to show you as you can see right now my uh, I have to put it down flat so you could see better. You can see that um, this is, I will put on the side, that the circle I made, or loop I made, is slightly smaller than the area that I have here. I need to adjust this loop once in a while. And how to adjust it? So holding the stitches, you can, so here's my loop, Holding the stitches here, you can pull on this side right here, or you can pull over there. When you pull on the long tail, free tail, you will make your loop smaller. Watch it. You see, it's getting smaller. It's safer that your loop right the way is slightly bigger. Because when it's smaller, it's easy to make it bigger right now at the beginning while I have like five or ten stitches, or at least half here. <clears throat> it will not be easy to undo when you have it all done. Then you will have to undo everything. So right the way, you can pull on this side of the loop and make it bigger. Like this. And now it's bigger again. You see, the size is be better. Not my favorite way of doing this kind of stuff, but I'm following directions from the book. So, before we go and crochet around, I prefer right the way make sure that the size of my loop 
will fit and cover this area okay look like this is the size that i need if it's not the size i need for example let's see i will create this loop too big you can see it's too big loop right so how do we make it smaller by holding and pulling on the free tail by pulling it i pulling on it look at this it's getting smaller now if it's too small like i did right now it's too small again you go on that side and pull thread from this side and make your loop big again for now i will leave this loop i see it's purposely i made it longer i will go ahead and crochet my pattern the pattern asking for five single crochet stitches pico so we will crochet around this loop So let's pick up stitch just a second it's kind of twisted a little bit okay so now i already have my five single crochet stitches now i can go and crochet pico one two and three make your pico And again around the loop five single crochet stitches two three four five don't be in a hurry it's very important that you ride the way covering on the back and your stitches not showing your uh, between stitches you don't see the padding cord if you do it's not as easy to adjust it as we did before so all we have to do if you see stitches if you see padding cord tightly hold your padding cord of the loop and only move the stitches you see now it's neat if it's too much you can always pull the, the stitches back so let's continue I will crochet quite a bit and then I will show you the rest all you need to do just create the loop neatly and crochet around it and make sure that stitches when you hold the loop you see I'm trying to hold my fingers quite close that and pull on a padding cord just stroke uh, slight and gentle strokes to keep each strand at the same length so this will not give me bumps on the back between stitches and it will not show itself at least it helps <clears throat> so I hold my fingers quite close here we need to make pico one two three pico and continue five single crochet stitches one two three see like that moving this slightly so that the padding cord is behaving well <laughs> four and five and slightly I can move my stitches very very gently it's better looking loop when it's uh, all the stitches kind of snug and close to each other now we're creating next pico. I 
again five stitches two three and five pico Yeah, it's easier for me to crochet pico when the last stitch quite stretched. Now at some point probably this short tail will appear instead of being on the back it's kind of twisting its nature of crochet and it becomes in the front. So pull it through and pull it back again. So it will rotate on its own. It's okay, don't worry about this. It's not a big deal. And again, five single crochet stitches. Crochet it slowly, make sure the work is neat on the back also that your thread actually goes one, two, three, four, that your thread on the back also lay, you see, neatly and close. You still can see a little bit of my padding cord, but this is the back, the most important part that I don't see it on the front. So again, make pico. And again, around the padding cord, one, two, three, four, and five. Pico. Like this and continue. One, two, three, four, and five. Stop here for a second and make sure that your strands of thread here behaving well <laughs> and pull make sure that your stitches are snug together and you do not see padding cord anywhere now let's adjust a little bit our loop to the rectangle that we have here to cover what you have to do just lay it on the piece of your work because we will have to adjust it right now. My loop is slightly bigger. And so what I will do, I see that I will need to go on top. I will sew this to cover, to cover this part. It's very important. So I kind of hold it here with my fingers and go and see, lay my loop already in the area, basically laying it to cover this stitches that were connecting stitches like this okay so this gives you idea gives you idea you see how much longer my loop is so i can pull on it i can pull slightly slowly and th then again go and see if this is what i need so i'm holding all those stitches that i just made like this and pull on this padding cord very gently very slowly of course my stitches misbehave here and it's not something I want 
Okay, now look like they're okay. If you see that your stitch is too tight here, you can always just move them. Now let's do again. I pulled in my thread and let's measure again my loop. Again, I'm going and laying my loop like this. Covering the stitches that are connected stitches right there. And still it's a little bit too long. So again, I have to do, make some pulling to do. So now I basically hold it with all my hand. Oh, I can just, now, oh well, now it's too much, but it's okay. Now I have to make sure that stitch are not so tight. And I push them back. It's why I told you that this loop don't crochet tight stitches, just normal stitches, not too tight. And I will have to go and see what I did. Probably it will be just the right side, so size, I don't know. Sometimes it's nicer to do it in your hands. You can see better that way. Okay, here I will cover like that. Then I will cover these stitches here, right there. This way. And you know what? I think this is the right size of my loop. Slightly need to be bigger because I will not be able to cover this area here, this part. So what I do now, since my loop is smaller than I need, I pull on this part here, right? And this is the time to adjust, not later, because later it will be too late. So pull here and then pull those stitches. You see they become kind of tight when I do that, so you move them this way. Little by little, not right away. You can always adjust them a little bit later. Right now we're just trying to figure out the size of the loop. And this is the most difficult part, I would say. So again, I will take it in my, in my hands, lay it like that, and lay on the edges of my work to see if I will cover the right places and at the same time have the right size of the loop. So now you can see I will be able to cover everything just right. Here's my end. It is. So before I go I feel like I would make it slightly smaller so let's see. So I will go again like this, just checking. Checking one more time, just before. It's always better to measure everything a few times before you cut your thread or before, before you cut your fabric, right? There is a Russian saying that goes this way. <clears throat> it's better 
seven times to measure and then cut. And it's true. <laughs> now I have to slightly move my stitches. It was way easier when I was doing it <laughs> before. Now I don't know why I have this problem. But it's okay when you see how I do that and if I have some difficult moments in my work, you at least know how to fix it. So you see, I do it slowly. I move my stitches right now so that they will look neat. It takes time. Don't be in a hurry. Nobody chasing you to finish it. Because I can see a little gaps of my stitch between stitches and I don't like this personally, so I have to move all those stitches together. Okay, one more check, one more time, and then we'll continue crochet our final. This will be final check because I really want it to be precise, look neat, beautiful. Now my stitch is running away from me here. Okay, let's do it one more time. I will do it on the table. It's better that way. So here stitches go and covering everything I need. Then I can do it here. Over there. Cover stitches right there and like that. Here all of it. I could even go slightly smaller, I would say. I would make it shorter. I will pull on it one more time. Not very much, so I did pull and I will still go and check. I hope you see everything. So going this way, covering that area, and then we'll have enough area to cover all those stitches here. Like this. <clears throat> okay. So let's continue crochet. I will just, I just have feeling that I want to make it smaller. Very little. And so let's continue now. Now we just made our loop. It's all. Loop is measured. So you see, I at least crochet a half of it. This is when you still can pull here and there, especially this part, to adjust the size of your ring. And now you can just continue and crochet. That's it. And then I will show you how to finish. Okay. So one, two, three for Pico. Oh, I wonder how many people are still hanging here with me. I'm not even looking. I see six people are still here. It's quite a difficult motif to make. And I came to the very last and the most difficult part. So I think it's five. One, two, three, four. I need to make one more stitch. Because I was talking and I lost it. So four and five. Again, Pico.
Again, five single crochet stitches. Slightly, as you noticed, I'm slightly pushing my stitches together. Also, you have to watch for one more thing. Since you're pushing them together, the distance between picots changing also. So make make sure that your distance between picot picots everywhere the same. Again, pico. And five single crochet stitches. Now again, as you can see, this tail that I have kind of twisted, so all I have to do is to remove it. By the way, there is one. I'm not really sure where it goes, but just move it to the front. And don't worry about this one, kind of, we will hide it somehow. It will disappear on its own. If something just slightly longer, not a big deal. We can always even cut it if it's needed. So we continue crochet, um, pico. We're almost finished. We're almost done. And we'll have beautiful motif. Of course, probably your first motif and second will look a little bit strange probably will not look right don't take your time don't be in a hurry crochet it slowly take time for rest a little bit it's impossible to sit as long as i do today um one two three four five okay again pico so please don't sit uh, and crochet this motif all day long i just um Take little breaks, do exercises, go for a walk. <clears throat> it will be a little bit challenging to crochet at the end. So watch how I deal with this. So we can go and crochet again. Five single crochet stitches. One. Two, three, four, five. Slightly I will move my stitches as you can see. See how it is sometimes you can see your padding cord. So you have to move your stitches. It's nice to have nails to adjust everything. Like this. Let's do our pico. The funny thing that I cannot see very well, I need to change my glasses to something else. <laughs> Stronger glasses needed in just a moment. Okay, totally different, totally different view. Okay, now let me adjust here some things. Okay, 
You see very little left. We probably will have to make only 10 or 15 stitches here with picos. So let's and um, I would suggest to end here when we end here at the beginning to make pico here also. Okay. Let's continue again. One, two, sorry, my hands went away, three, four, four, and five. Again, pico, one, two, three, Feels like you can uh, finish soon, but um, I can see how stitches behave here, so I have to move them accordingly to make sure that they all actually have the same distance, the speakers. Now I pull those uh, the la the tail underneath. Oops, the wrong thing. Okay, now one, two, two. Three, four, and five. I probably will be okay with finishing. Let's see. I have leverage here to move my stitches in such a way that because they're really tight in here, so I don't think I can fit more stitches. So what I will do first, I will move them this way. And now I will move them this way. Stretch them so that I will end up here without without gap between. Here's the terrain. It's finished. Now Remember I told you we have to come to this last piece, last end. We made five stitches here and we are where we began, right there, where we made chain. First of all, we will have to make pico. It's asking for pico, right? Because five stitches on both sides, five stitches here and five stitches on that side, asking for pico. I don't know if you saw me. So five stitches in that area and five stitches here, right? We're ending. Our uh, ring is done, but we need to make pico at the end. So I was pushing my stitches to the point that I could make that stitch here, that pico right at that area. Now I will go and make where the chain was slip stitch. I can make a slip stitch or I can... No, I will not make slip stitch. Look what I will do. So I will finish here. I will cut my thread. Quite a long piece. So thread is cut. Now, where the pico was, I will just pull this thread out. Okay, and so that no one will see where I finished my work or where I started, 
I will show you what I will do. First of all, I will thread my needle, my tapestry needle. Let me grab my needle. And let me show you what I will do. Before I will do that, did you notice where my padding cord end up on the back? It's where I want it. But I will deal with this in a minute, I will show you. First we have to finish our ring. And the ring is finished with Pico. Now thread, move this thread, hope you'll see better, right where the chain was, chain. Stitch between, between the stem and the first stitch of the ring between right under that loop two loops of the stitch move it there now you see right so you if you do that you will not really see the beginning of your work and the the start and the end just nice even uh ring Okay, so let's um, keep this for a while. Um, I would prefer to finish this first, those ends. I'll show you how I do that. Um, you can cut them off right the way, right here, where they are. Actually. Or you can weave them in, inside the ring. I prefer to weave them in, honestly. This is my preference. Yeah, let me show you how I do that. I'll just grab at least one. I'll pick up the right needle here. This is good to do when you have quite um, distinct separation between the beginning of the round and the end of the round. I really don't have to do that honestly, but I can. I was I wanted to show you. I cannot. Okay, I see. I can still can do it. Not easy to weave in. The ends are stubborn. I will try my best. Okay. That's good. And it will be quite a job to uh, weave it in. So what we will do, you do it on the wrong side of your work and you can go with the needle right over here where you started you see into those stitches and you don't have to go too much just a little bit you see like this that's it and now they take out this needle be very gentle here and I right away take the needle out and pull thread through to connect so that you will not see the gap anymore between the beginning and the end. And when you're done, you can take this thread off, cut it off. This is a good way of fixing the gap if you see that very distinctly in the front. This helps you connect close the ring, have the closure. But our ring actually is done very, very precisely and good. So what I will do, I will cut the rest of those um, strands of padding cord. Be very gentle here. Don't cut your thread because you still have thread. I do still have that thread that I need to sew 
the ring to the motif. So very carefully. I will show you it wasn't showing very well. Okay. So this is the padding cord. We don't need it anymore. Like this. And now we can sew our ring to the motif. To sew ring to the motif is quite easy. You can sew with this since you sew in with the same thread as you crocheted. <clears throat> you can sew and see this from the front on the right side. Make sure at first so that you don't see this area. Cover this very well. I would suggest to go and do this first. It's kind of straight line, so you can go with your um, with your needle and your thread move it inside that row of uh, stitches we have that you remember those 21 stitches was there so i will put my thread inside and i will show what else i will do I'll tighten up and make it curvy like this. So I will put my thread there first. This is my first step. With the thread go all the way. And why I do that? Because our ring is oval or ring and this part is straight line. We want to make this also kind of curvy, right? So what we will do, the technique is very easy. You come here with the strand of thread and then pull on it. Make those stitches kind of together. Very slightly, not too much. Like this, see? And now it will be easy for us to connect and make sure that it's more rounded than it's rectangular. And make sure to see your work on the right side. It's way better this way because you see where the stitches are what to cover, what not. Once in a while, of course, you will see what's going on on the back. So here's my stitch right there. First, I will go on top here, on the front. I'll move it on the front and start from there. Because it's easy for me to see what I'm doing like this so this area look nice and neat and what I will do I will just go and grab and pull where I will sew under those stitches under those visible stitches right those stitches let me show them to you I will sew Gosh, I'm not sure if you see. I will move my needle through those stitches under the loops. This is how I will sew. And when I go back, of course, I will have to move my thread next to it so that no one will see which way the stitch went. It's quite a... 
Oh, time for bed, Wendy. Okay, <laughs> good night. Sorry to keep you so long. Okay, let's continue. Those who still there with me. So now going back from back to front and make sure again that you are inserting the needle right where those stitches are, right under the loops. This is kind of like a little secret. <laughs> I, I bet you all of you know how to do this. Not the only I that know this kind of technique. So now again from the back going to the front and you don't have to sew each stitch. Skip a few stitches when you go back and make sure not to sew the branch to the back. And again, from front, very close, next to the uh, thread that coming out, now going on the back. And you cannot see at all where you are sewing this way. Again, from back. front. Try not to poke myself. <laughs> like this. And going back. So ladies, uh, I know I don't want to keep anyone longer than that. This is how you go around and sew your um, last element, the centerpiece to the entire motif. This is very easy, as you can see. Only it's very tedious job. Very, very tedious. You have to be very precise, very careful, slowly, not no rush here. And continue sewing this way all the way to where you started, right here. And then just weave in the thread any way you find it. Plus I would weave it in a stem. Okay. So I will stop my lesson here because it will take a long time to uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, go and sew all this. But this is how you do that. You just come in closer to the stitches that you want to cover and make sure to adjust this to make it actually more rounded and even and beautiful. And that will be your motif, like this. And crochet as many as you like. Please show them to me in a group, if you are part of my group. If not, uh, you can always put uh, send me messenger, a message and messenger in the business page Irish Crochet Lab. I always put all the information in ca in uh, description of each video, so you can find all my uh, pages, because I have three groups and I have a business page and a website. So this is how you crochet this motif. I do hope you enjoyed this lesson. Please press like. The more likes I have, the better it is for my video. More people will see that video. Please comment later um, on the video. You can also ask questions here. Uh, after I post video, after video will go uh, as recorded. So this is it for today. Next lesson is next Tuesday from this book. But this week I also have next lesson from Masterpieces of Irish Crochet Lace. It's on Thursday, also at 12 o'clock. So that's it. Have a wonderful day. 
and thank you for joining me today. Goodbye.